in person members of the public participating remotely. I would like to introduce the commissioners and staff present. Okay. Um, Chair Mayron Bunyaget, myself, Commissioner Jessica Gilmartin. Hello? Okay. Is that good? Hello? Okay, I'll just keep going, let it echo because it's just our names. Okay. Commissioner Peter Joshua, Commissioner Woman Lee, Commissioner Kelly Terrio, Commissioner Kate Wessel, Commissioner Ada Chen Recky, Commissioner Katie Hadervik, Commissioner Carol Orton, Vice Chair Pavneet Singh, Commissioner Jennifer Weiss, and Chair Vamsi Velaga Budi. Staff present includes Library and Community Service Director Sean Reinhardt, Library and Community Service Manager Natalia Jones, Library and Commission Community Service Supervisor Rondell Howard, Library and Community Services Supervisor Trisha Mullen, Management Analysis Ashley Walker. Ashley will be helping facilitate the meeting. Ashley, will you please take a moment and provide instructions to the Commission and the members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, para todas las personas que estén escuchando la reunión en la llamada de Zoom y quieran escuchar la interpretación en directo en español, por favor, pulsen el icono que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla, que tiene el icono de un globo terráqueo, y seleccionen la opción en español. Para las personas que estén aquí presentes esta tarde y deseen eh, interpretación en español en vivo, por favor acérquense al fondo de la sala donde podrán adquirir un receptor para escuchar uh, la interpretación en directo. Muchas gracias. Um, Ashley, will you take a moment and provide instructions to the commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Yes, thank you, Chair. For members of the public who are attending this meeting virtually and wish to provide public comment, after the Chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on, please engage the raised hand feature at the bottom of your screen. For those who are calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star 9 to raise your virtual hand. For members of the public attending in person, there are speaker cards available on the table over there. Uh, Please complete one and turn it into staff before public comment is called for the item you wish to speak on. Because tonight's meeting is a special joint meeting, there will be no call for general public comment. Therefore, public comment will be limited to the items on the agenda. However, members of the public are welcome to send feedback on any subject to the online suggestion box at menlopark.gov feedback or in writing in the suggestion box. If there are a large number of public commenters, the time limit may be adjusted by the chair in order to allow everyone a chance to comment. When your turn for public comment has arrived, staff will unmute you. As a side note, since the posting of the September 18th meeting minutes in the agenda packet, an error was noticed. I'd like to request that the commission take no action on the minutes tonight to allow time for a correction. The minutes will be brought back to a future meeting for commission approval. And with that, I'll return the meeting to the chair. All right, thank you for the update. So we'll move item C1, approval of the minutes from the September 18th Joint Parks and Rec and Library Commission meeting to a future meeting once the corrected minutes are available. Uh, please make a note that this change in tonight's meeting minutes. Let's proceed to the next item on our agenda. Moving on to I item C2, the commission will recommend potential names and or dedications for the new multi-service center at 100 Terminal Avenue. Director Reinhardt and LCS manager Natalia Jones will give a presentation.
All right, we'll get started with the presentation of recommending potential names and or dedications for the new multi-service center at 100 Terminal Avenue. And here is a picture of the East Terrace. So the recommendation, the city staff recommends that the Parks and Recreation Committee, sorry, the Parks and Recreation Commission and the Library Commission consider community input, review city council policy and direction, and then jointly recommend to city council up to three potential names or dedications for the new multi-service center at 100 Terminal and to also recommend three potential names and or dedications for each of the five major programs that will be housed in the new facility. That will be the Aquatic Center, the Library, the Recreation Center, the Senior Center, and the Youth Center. There are no final decisions about the names and the dedications that will be made tonight or at this time. The City Council will have the final decisions on names and dedications. The City Council established a multi-step process that included gathering community input that will help inform the City Council's decision-making about the names or the dedications for the new facility. The City Council will review the Park and Rec Commission and Library Commission recommendations in either November or December at a date that has not yet been determined. Once we know of that date, we will announce it to the public in advance. Just a little background. The city has held multiple public meetings on the topic of naming the new facility. The meeting materials and records are all available on the city website. The, um, it includes staff reports. It also includes meeting minutes and video recordings of the proceedings. The meeting materials and records contain background information that can also help inform the Park and Recreation Commission and Library Commission recommendations. And for reference, a list of previous meetings will be included in the analysis section of each staff report. Here is a picture of the library. individual program will return will retain retain its unique identity and programs in the facility and though they'll work together um, with collaborating and synergies between the individual programs um, the newly built facility will be an all-in-one design the overall campus name prior to being demolished um, to make way for this new center, the facilities at 100 Terminal were all in separate buildings, separate standalone facilities that each had its own name. There was no record of one name being bared for the whole campus, as it's called, in the past. The construction of a new single multi-service facility presents the opportunity for the city council to assign an overall name or overall dedication to the campus if the city council chooses to do so. The city council could also include Kelly Park when renaming or rededicating. However, at this time, Kelly Park is not being considered. And then this is the main entry of the, the new facility. And then I'll pass this on. So I'll go over the next couple of slides. Uh, this one here is just a front view of a front aerial view of the, of the facility and what it will look like. So you have the front entrance, the aquatics pool area, and then you have that back area where it says Kelly, Kelly Park 
uh, field and track. Here is just a rendering of the first floor with kind of a dollhouse view. Um, as you can see, there's the gymnasium to the left. Um, next to that, you have the the um, the after school program in that area. Next to that area is the children's library, and then to the far right, you have kind of like our senior senior lounge and dining area in both. And then far to the to the far right, where the mouse is now, is our outside terrace in the front area. There's also a small a small west terrace in a uh, terrace in the back area as well. Um, here's just an overview of the layout of the first floor, just to get a better look. This here is the second floor. It has a with the rendering. So if we starting from the left, that area there where the gym is located is an area that you can actually look down from. Um, right next to that is our fitness center, our newly. Uh, Restore Fitness Center. Next to that will be the Movement Studio area. Right above from that is a um, kind of our flex classroom, meeting room. And behind that is our is our makerspace. Uh, the makerspace is equipped with a with a uh, terrace as well that oversees the backfield, uh, Kelly Field, so it has a nice view. Um, right next to that is the adult library, adult teen library that's on the second floor. And then you also have the teen zone uh, staff areas as well in that in that section and then here's a here's an overview of the second floor um so with that being said uh we have a monument monument sign uh this project includes a new monument sign located next to the street at the entrance on terminal avenue uh for the purpose of uh demarcating the address and indicating what is located there so we'll have that big sign in the front um, this project also has a, a main entry building sign. So uh, this design to include a sign right over the main entrance that leads you into the new building to identify the building for everybody that's walking up. Um, the new building will have a single consolidated main entry uh, that everybody goes to in order to access the other entities. And this is way different from what we had in the previous facilities because each one of those five components that Natalia named had their own main entry. So this will be one consolidated entry that everybody will go to. Um, next, we will have some wayfinding and room signs. So the project design includes uh, signs on each of one of the, the program areas inside the building, um, signage throughout the campus to guide visitors to the individual programs and destinations that's needed within the building. And then lastly, we'll have a dedication plaque. Um, so it's customary for us to, for when you build a new building to have uh, significant um, names to the new building. And so uh, dedication plaques typically are display, display the year or date of when the building was completed uh, and officially dedicated. Also recognizes individuals or entities that played a significant role in the project. Um, such as the uh, elected officials, architects, builders, financers, voters, um, ballot measures, um, as appropriate to the uh, to the specific facility. Facility, sorry about that. And then here's the makerspace, kind of a a better view of that. And then I'll pass it over for Sean to finish. Thank you. So this next section really kind of talks about the discussion that's going to happen tonight and the aids uh, for the recommendation process. Um, this is all referenced in the staff report as well. There are kind of four main attachments. The first is the naming policy that City Council up back in March that dates back originally to the 80s. Again, they updated it in March, so that's here for reference. There's also a matrix kind of showing the different areas where City Council has asked these two commissions to make recommendations. Again, each of those five major program areas, um, the overall campus, and if desired, like uh, suggestions for dedication. So there's like a chart that's just to kind of help aid that process. There's also a summary list of all the specific names that were suggested by community members, just kind of compiling them from all of the comments that have been received. And then finally, there is a full compilation of, of all the written comments that were uh, received, all just kind of written out. Um, so just again, to walk through those, we have for reference during the, I won't spend time here, but if we need to come back to these and look at them, they're here. The naming policy is right here, it covers two slides. Um, the recommendation matrix, you can kind of see here how that's laid out, and we'll probably return to that later when the commission gets into its discussion. Just quickly kind of showing 
you know, each of those five program areas, um, additional spaces for potentially the overall campus and the dedication plaque, just mentioning those most recent facility names here, and spaces for the commissions to make up to three recommendations for each, and that's what the city council asked them to do. Um, and then um, also in the staff report, we pulled out all the specific names that had been suggested by community members. Additional ones could be suggested tonight. This is just capturing the ones that had been received so far. So um, this is sort of broken down on these slides. We can come back to them if needed for the Aquatic Center. There on the left, you can see these are some specific names that were suggested. And then on the right, just some notes about them, uh, whether it was the most recent name or what is behind the name. If it's the name of the neighborhood, it's the name of a specific person. And this is all pulled from the suggestions themselves. Similarly for the library, you can see a few um, specific names suggested there. Again, the recreation center and gymnasium, same deal. Um, senior center, and we can of course come back to these and spend more time on them. I'm really just kind of walking through what's available for the discussion tonight. Youth center, uh, there were quite a few more specific suggestions for the overall campus. You can see that's a bit longer of a list and we're just presenting them as people suggested them. And there were some additional general suggestions sprinkled throughout that didn't really talk about a specific name, but sort of more like conceptual. So we did our best to kind of pull those out and have them here for reference. Um, and then turning to that last item, the compilation of community feedback, it's several pages long. There's over 200 comments in there. Um, it's posted to the feedback form webpage which is menlopark.gov slash name, the place where people went to fill out the form. So the compilation is there. If we receive additional comments, we'll do our best to kind of keep that updated. I think it was posted when this agenda went out, I think on October 18th or 19th. Um, most of the comments came in through the online feedback form. Some others were sent through our suggestion box, like on paper or direct email. Um, we uh, did in the compilation present all the comments anonymously, um, just to make, to make it clear, like to focus on the comment and not the specific names of the people. If folks want to identify, hey, that's my comment, that's perfectly fine, but we didn't want to presume. And let's see, this is a beautiful picture of sort of the back of the building uh, facing Kelly Park, and this is the view of the Children's Library and Terrace. Um, and almost done here with the presentation portion, um, just to reiterate some next steps for the process after tonight. Um, the City Council will review the recommendations that the commissions make tonight. Um, and again, as Natalia mentioned earlier, that's gonna be in November or December. We haven't nailed down that date yet, but the date will be announced to the public well in advance once we know it. And then at that time, the city council is anticipated to hear all the community input, any additional input at that meeting and leading up to that meeting, and then to make a final decision about names or dedications for each of those five components potentially the overall campus, potentially a dedication. Um, the final decision rests with the city council and that will happen at that time. And that sums up the um, slides. We have them available here if we need to put them back up for reference. Uh, but with that, I think we'll hand it back over to the chair. All right. Okay, before we go to public comment, Ashley, how many speakers do we have at this time on this item? Okay. We have upwards of 24 and people online are raising their hands. So oh. okay, could I'm be more. around okay. 30 or 40. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, so based on the number of speakers in the queue, each speaker will have one minute, one and a half minutes. Um, some reminders, uh, when you come up to um, the front, if you could make sure you speak clearly to the mic because we're also speaking not only to the audience here, but also to um, people online. Um, we're gonna have, we're gonna stay with our timer. And so um, at one, one and a half minutes, um, I'm gonna use the mic to say thank you to make sure and honor that everyone who wanted to speak today gets equal amount of time. So um, we will proceed with public comment. At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please bring a comment card forward. 
If you're on Zoom, please notify the staff liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function. And our first speaker is Wayne Owens. Anyway, um, Onetta Harris has been one of the legacies of this community. And uh, I look at the board and I think that uh, none of you know her. You're just way too young. She's just a name to you. Uh, she saved my life, literally. I was in the classroom back here in this farmer's room at uh, nine years old. And I had a knot in my stomach. They sent me home. I'm walking down Ivy Drive, I get between Lumen Deer and Holly Bank, and I passed out. This lady stops her Volkswagen. She stops her Volkswagen, pulls the stuff out of her back seat, picks me up, puts me in her back in the uh, back seat of her car, and took me to my house. Uh, my father was not home. She called him at his job. She said, take me to the hospital. We were poor. We couldn't afford Stanford or Kaiser. We couldn't just play a hospital. Okay. She rushed me to the emergency room and uh, up to the operating room. The doctor told my father, had I not got there in, in another couple of minutes, I probably would have died. You know, and uh, Slade saved my life, literally. It's like erasing a part of our history when you do this. She's a legacy in this community. We're taking a page out of Florida's system where they don't even teach black history like it is. Right. This lady is, is exactly what it is here. We all know her. She was a mother in this community. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Testing. Dr. Ola. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Just a reminder when you come up, if you can talk to into the mic, you can hold it or arrange it and then we're also going to um, refrain from clapping as well, too, so that we can continue to move on with the meeting as well, too. Thank you. My name is Dr. Ola robert -Sai. I've lived in the Bay Area for the past 50, 50 years. And I remember when I used to can work reset, for Ashley? Ray Camp right here in Menlo Park. And uh, throughout the years, I think one of the names that I people talk about is Renita Harris and about our contribution to this community. And I want to let you people know that without the past, there's no present. And we have to establish our legacy. And the legacy, if you look at the legacy of the African American, is diminishing. We have to reinstate it. Really, we have to do a justice moving forward to make sure that this name is not actually perished. So the people behind can always come across and say, who is Sonida Harris? And we can give a brief history about our contribution to this existing community. We are all going to come and go, but the name continues. So please, everybody, allow me. Let me tell you, please, please, don't let this legacy fade away. Let us remember what actually brings us together as a member of human being. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Vicky Robledo. Uh, oh, you can't reset. that. Um, first and foremost, I don't even think this conversation should be taking place. Um, for most of the people in this community, myself included, we're here for a reason, and that's to retain the name of somebody that had a great impact on this community when it was neglected. And so th that's part of the struggles that communities of color have is that we got to do it on our own. And so Onetta did that for, for this community. And I think everybody that is here knew her, their kids were, you know, went, went to the center. And you know, when I think about erasing history, it's critical to, I mean, history is, is history. That's why the word history is there to preserve people who've had an impact on the communities in which they had something to do with creating something. When you repave a street, you don't change the name of the street. 
when you, just because somebody comes in with more money and they decide to repair, or to, to help increase, so make it better, shouldn't change. We're not going to change Arriaga Community Center. Somebody wants to tear it down. We have Flood Park. We have MLK. We got Ida B. Wells. Every time somebody new comes into your community shouldn't mean you have to erase the history of that community. And everybody here is very passionate. And we've already had to do this four times. And I don't see anybody opposing it from any other side. We don't go over there and say, change Flood Park's name, change Mitchell Park name, change Lucille Packard's name. I mean, the idea is to retain Thank the you. history. And I need more minutes, Lana. So, I mean, I know I've known this community and I know I've Are you giving her time for her? She gave you the time. Okay, anyway, okay. you see what we're trying to do and I hope and, and really ask that you- Everyone's keep, time. Keep it. Oh, Thank you. Yes. Thank you for your comment. Francis? First of all, I want to apologize for the last time I was here. And I was mad because the day I said before you hurt, I am hurt because she earned this name. She earned it. Mark Zuckerberg is 39 years old. She's been running this center since she was 40. We have a bus here to 281. That better? We have a bus here to 281. And the name of that bus is Onetta Harris is still here. You guys are just a commission. You guys, gotta, you guys are just, you got to go back and take this to the city council. Tell them we Mandela hurt. Tell them we Martin Luther King hurt. Tell them we Harriet Tubman hurt. See, that hurted us. She deserves this. She earned this. She saved so many kids. And I don't understand why Meta changed this name from Facebook. I don't even understand why he did that. So thank you guys for being here. And to Ms. Rose, if you're looking, I apologize to you too. But it just hurt me to see you stand up here and come against Ms. Harris when you got one foot in the grave and one foot out. And you couldn't understand how powerful that she was to us. So it was wrong for us to see you, Ms. Rose, if you're looking, that you got one foot in the grave and one foot out. For you to come against her, you just like you turn your back on your people. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Victoria Flemings. First, I'd like to address everyone here. Thank you, everyone, family and friends, for coming. But I like to get straight to the point. OK. Now, this is about a monument, a legacy. A legacy is very important. All over the world, they've been erasing our history, Black people history. Now, this is a time to make difference. You won't give us respir you won't give us our money back for all that we have reparation for everything we've done for America. We built the United States. We built this. You Onetta Harris built Menlo Park. Okay? There's places where a lot of people wouldn't go to help families, but Onetta was there to feed, help, and solve problems. Now, who is going to step in and help the Black families of Menlo Park? It seems as though you're letting us down after Onetta Harris has done so much for the community. They didn't name the community after Onetta Harris for nothing. She was a powerful woman. That woman was my auntie. I am Vicki Dixon, and I stand here proud for what my auntie did. I served at MacArthur Park for many years, serving you guys, everybody. I heard everything you said, how were you were going to make change around here. I didn't tell anyone. I kept your secrets. But now I'm standing Sorry. up for my people. Thank you. You're okay? 
Onetta Harris, I want the center to continue to be Onetta Harris Center. You have erased enough of our legacy in history. At this point in time, you owe us black people so much. There's nothing you can do but give us our name. And I expect to have that name on there. Onetta Harris Community Center. I look for nothing different. Do not let us down. As you see, the United States is about to go to war. How are you going to handle this? You're going against war with us now. What are you going to do? Thank you. I'm sorry. I have to let you have to stop you. Thank there. you very much. Thank you for your comment. I thank you all very kindly for hearing me. Thank you. Respectfully. Kevin Barker. Humbly. Thank you. Kevin Barber. Okay. The reality is, the perception is that you come in and you build Menlo Park up and you get rid of our history, which is not fair. Onetta Harris, she was not only a mother, but she was a mentor to so many in the community. Uh, you know, people come in our life for a reason. And, 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 and I was blessed to grow up in Menlo Park and on the same street as Miss Harris lived on. Ken Harris, which is a, one of her sons, was like a mentor to me. And in our lives, people come for a reason. Somebody can be our mother without being bi biologically our mother. And Miss Harris was just that, a mother to many of us. In the Bible, Exodus chapter 20, it says, honor thy mother and thy father. Hey. So if Miss Harris has been a mother to all of us, what we're doing is trying to honor our mother. And it would be an honor if Menlo Park would join with us to honor Miss Harris. Here's the petition to support that. Thank you. Somebody take my 18 minutes. Thank you so much. We'll use that for the last. Thank you for your comment. Uh, the, the next name I have is actually written as Onetta Harris. Yeah. Come on up, Onetta. Hey, um, good evening. Uh, nice to see you guys all. Thanks for coming. Um, I was going to write out a something and I just want to come off the heart like we have to keep this name the same the overall name of the community center is Onetta Harris Community Center it's gonna I hope it stays that way I'm imploring you guys to keep it that way I'm named after my grandmother I never had the opportunity to meet her unfortunately but the stories that I hear from everybody from the elders from people who had a chance to experience her like it's, it's she's larger than life I grew up at Onetta Harris Community Center. Vanessa Carlisle was one of my mentors. She, you know, she was my one of my second parents, I would say. But a lot of my first happens that happened there. My first job, um, the first time I went swimming, the first time I played basketball, I played basketball at Sacred Heart. I mean, I played basketball in the community, and it was one of those things that was it was really a community, a place, a safe haven that we can come to. And my son now, he went to Camp Menlo this last summer. This is his first time. We're going to continue that legacy. And it's one of those things that if you guys change the name, you know, someone said a couple of weeks ago that we should name it after a nationally known hero. Why? When we have somebody here locally that we can name this after, that we can keep the name after, and why do we need to highlight other people who did nothing in the community? My grandmother did a lot, and I know it seems biased. I'm named after her, but the truth is the truth. And, you know, the naysayers can say what they want, but the resounding consensus here is that we want the name to stay the same. The overall name of the community center should stay as it is. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Henderson Ford. Thank 
Oh, you're too kind. Okay, the time starts now. Okay, hi, my name is Henderson Ford, also Moyenda Wabogo. I'm a member of Ulanle Wabogo's extended family. I grew up here in East Palo Alto. I'm East Menlo Park, East Palo Alto diaspora. Okay, and what I'm concerned about is whether or not this land use option is in conflict with the comprehensive plan. What is the plan for East Menlo Park? In the face of Facebook, for example, who is creating their own community? Company town, excuse me. And the history of company towns has, it's, it's not a nice one. And the issue is, is that is our comprehensive plan in terms of allowing communities and neighborhoods to define themselves, is it distributed com consistently across all the neighborhoods in Menlo Park? Is, can we just go over in, or not we, can the board, they're the ones who um, decide what the public interest is, not us. And that is an issue. Thank you for your comment. Just wanted to remind also for to just out of respect of everybody who's online and, and just to make sure to refrain from clapping because not everyone, you know, just making sure we're doing this neutrally. Thank you for your comment. Greg Goodwin. donated time. Speaking with oh. donated time, Greg Goodwin. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, to begin with, I wanted to say that we shouldn't even be here. This is a waste of time. It's a waste of uh, energy. It's, 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 it's a waste, period, because it hinges, it hinges on hypocrisy. This city has stated several times that it was not going to change Annetta Harris name, the center name. But then it's taken a vote to change the name. So, you know, that it just kind of expels uh, any trust that we would have in the board and the city because of the hypocrisy associated with the decisions that you're making. Um, this is a copy of uh, a flyer we used to have when we did college fairs, and this came from Monetta Harris, uh, her um, influence. And basically, this was college and career. And I've said it many times that she had influenced different young people to change their ways and turn from crime to college uh, education and employment. And as a result, um, a lot of people, a lot of the young people turned out to be very decent citizens. This is on uh, just only a part of what she's done. Um, and in that same vein, she's been able to keep crime down and keep people out of you guys as houses. People from burglarizing your house and mine and everybody else's. Let's be real with this, okay? Uh, it was a crack epidemic, uh, and the, uh, they had all kind of drugs being planted in the neighborhoods and that kind of thing. And um, because of positive influences like um, Onetta Harris, it kept a lot of us safe. Whether we want to fa face the truth about this or not, we're going to have to be real with this, okay? And um, we are expecting integrity from the city of Menlo Park. We know that the black community of Bellhaven has always been treated, uh, treated like a stepchild to the city of Menlo Park, but uh, it's time for that to change. Um, 
And we realize, too, that uh, the black community, the only time we've ever had any uh, change is as a result of civil disobedience uh, or civil unrest and that kind of thing. That, that needs to change, too. Um, what we want to do is trust that you guys, that the city can be honest and, um, you know, live uh, up to the standards of a bureaucracy that uh, can be trusted pretty much. Um, Thank you for your time. Okay, your time last is up, thing. Your extra. Does anyone else want to give him his extra time? Yeah, somebody gave me some time. Okay. If, I, if I could just get the name of the first person who donated time. Terry? Yeah, Kevin. Make sure everyone gets their time. Okay. So um, here's a um, in petition. Uh, 250 names, and we want this as an opportunity to public open. And we want to reserve. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we want to be able to reserve. Uh, being able to submit additional um, additional signatures, okay? Um, well, I still got a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's this. Could pause it I for somebody else who might okay, need it. I just want to say, too, that I have been here before, and I had to relinquish what I had to say because of anger. Okay, it, you have to try to uh, uh, be respectful to everybody. And this is a, a heinous uh, uh, betrayal of the community for uh, them to try to decide to change the name. And, you know, it, it's like you think about Ravenswood High School, and I'm going to just tell it like it is. There's people now that don't even know we had a black high school over here because of all of the uh, uh, companies over there. You're taking away the history, you're taking away the legacy, and by removing that name, if you do, would expel the prominence of, of, of Meta Harris. It, it, it would just and erase our history and obliterate our name for in the future. Um, it's, 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 it's heinous. Thank it's you for your heinous. comment. Okay. All right. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for your comment. Taylor Barber. Hello. Um, so I really want to speak because my father grew up in this neighborhood and my grandfather ran the local Boys and Girls Club. And growing up, my father would take me and show me around where he grew up, and he always made it a point to point out the Harris House because of Onetta's impact on his life and her belief in the community. Um, and just a common definition of history is the chronological record of important events or a particular trend. Ms. Harris's trend of activism should be highlighted and used to inspire everyone that walks in that building to build upon her legacy of leadership. Onetta Harris was an important voice and a catalyst for positive change in Menlo Park and Bell Haven specifically for 30 years. Why would you want to erase that? She was a community activist whose actions directly resulted in programs that enhanced the quality of life for people living in this community. She focused on initiatives that address issues of health care and housing, serving as a chair to the neighborhood housing service, as well as helping to found the Charles Drew Medical Center, two major issues that still greatly affect this community. As stated by a former longstanding director of that very community center, Aaron Johnson, Ms. Harris was always doing something. There was no job too large or too small to make the community better. If you take away the Harris name, we lose a quintessential part of East Menlo Park's history. Ms. Harris was a bright star that illuminated this community and its history. Rather than dim it, we should be using it as a guide when we address the very same issues she did. Um, and just to go further, just someone's lack of knowledge of a person or something important doesn't give you the right to erase the history of that. We should be spreading that knowledge and spreading that history. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Portia Gardner McLemore. Hi. Menlo Park, my legacy. 
I grew up here right across the street from the Oneta Harris Center. I did everything at that park. Um, I can tell you everything that has ever gone on um, from maybe, I don't know, maybe six years old or so on up. Um, that was the only place I could go. My parents were very strict. I couldn't go to boys club because my parents wouldn't allow it. If I did go to the boys club, Miss Harris would see me and guess who would know about it? My parents. Um, I do want to say this, um, and I said it over the phone. Um, I'm who I am today, and I, I really mean this from my heart. Um, I had to reinvent my life. And what I did was I reached back to where I came from and the people that inspired me most, and I wrote about them, and I got admitted into the University of East Bay. And I got my master's degree there too. I'm a medical social worker now because Ms. Harris provided, if we didn't have a coat, she'd say, where's your coat? Lost it, mm -hmm, okay. Coat would show up, toys for Christmas. I have six siblings. My parents worked hard and made zero, but they did everything they could. And by the way, they married, were married until death. And that was a beautiful thing when we grew up here. All our parents were married. We had mothers and fathers in our homes. So I'm just saying that Ms. Harris inspired all of us to do better and to remember where we come from. She gave us pride in ourselves, in our community. She taught us how to love ourselves and how to love each other and how to look out for each other. I am Ms. Harris. Thank you for your Thank comment. You. Thank you for your comment. Pam Jones. I'm Pam Jones, a fifth year resident of Bellhaven and grew up in East Palo Alto. When I look at the new community center, and I wish we had a big picture of it here, I see, a little differently, the Bellhaven Multi-Generational Community Center. We now have five separate programs in one two-story building. Outside to the left, before I enter, those are the pools. I walk inside and to the left, one quarter of the building is the uh, Annette Harris Community Center that, uh, Gymnasium. I look forward, there is the Bellhaven, the Bellhaven Youth Center, and the Bellhaven Youth Library. To the right is the Menlo Park uh, Center, the uh, Senior Center. When I go upstairs and I look to the left, that is all Oneta Harris. So it's about one third of the building is Oneta Harris. And forward is the library. What I see is having a plaque on the entrance that, de that tells this whole story. This whole story needs to be, be told. Everything here needs to be written down, and it needs to be as we enter the building. I see the name of it as the um, Parks and Rec Master Plan, as the multi-generational, Bell, Bell Haven multi-generational campus. Bell Haven is the name that was used in the 1960s civil rights movement when they were documenting the redlining. Bell Haven is the name that's remembered. This land that we're on is Bell Haven. It's recorded at the county as Bell Haven. So there is a lot to all of what we have to say. We have a lot of legacy here, a lot of people here that have done a lot. Bell Haven is what anchors us because that has the name in the county, in the state, and as the federal government. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Gerald Dow. Thank you. Uh, with one minute and 30 seconds, I won't be able to say to everything, everything I want to, but uh, how she inspired me so much. Um, I just have one challenge for uh, for the commission. To, I'm just going to cut this in half and uh, tell the part that I want you guys to hear. Don't do like the United States of America. 
and eliminate and erase our history. Stay true and honor what Stay true and honor. I'm sorry, it's just so emotional for me. The gift that Facebook gave us. It was a gift. Let's stay true to that. And let's not erase erase our history. Let's work together and make history. I can't do it anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Ken Harris. Oh, just one quick note. Ken Harris will be speaking with donated time from Reverend Young. Onetta was helping everybody. Everybody. Onetta helped everybody. Onetta had no favorites. You know, all, all of us got treated the same in our family. Oh, family, okay. That's my grandson, Kate, and he goes to Beachwood. Anyway, um, anyway, everybody, uh, she helped everybody. She was selfless. And when the city council named it after Onetta, by unanimous proclamation, how many city councils can you get to agree on the same thing, Car Carlos? Tony? Antonio. Antonio, yes. How many people can you get? Council person from EPA. Um, how can you get an unanimous vote? You know why you got it? Because of her style, because of her compassion, because of her loyalty, because of her dedication, because of the way she stood up for you, me, and everybody else. People would come over our house, and she said, hey, uh, I, got, I got eight kids, but I can barely feed them, but I'll feed you. And she did. And see, these are the kind of spirits that we need in the community. All these people, Elder Bostic, uh, Miss Stamper, Billy Ray White, uh, Miss Cersei, all these people were at the house. You know, I'd come home, and she'd have all these people there. Whether she was on the board at the advisory committee, she was neighborhood housing services. I mean, she was just selfless at the school where she was assistant to the principal. She gave of herself. She helped everybody, including me. She had eight kids. Six of those eight finished college. Would have been eight out of eight, but six of them. That's kind of unusual. And six out of eight got degrees. But, you know, she was fair. She was honest, she was generous, and her heart was full of love. She was no nonsense. You could not get anything by her. But she did it with love and compassion and care. All we're asking you to do is to keep that spirit alive and, and, and keep that name on that part. There's no reason. I mean, all of us, look, at we're all here. We shouldn't have to be here like this. And we don't, we don't want to be adversaries with y'all. We don't need to be. We can work together. The right thing to do is to just keep the name. Right, Katie? That's it. So that, that's really it. That's it in a nutshell. I could go on and on and on. But come on, y'all. Onetta's last words to us was, y'all ought to love each other. Hey, how's that, how's that work? How's that work? So please, let's keep that name. Onetta Harris Community Center. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you for your comment, Const excuse me, Constance French. Are we getting ready to start? Okay, my name is Constance French from East Palo Alto. 
Okay, so, you know, I, I didn't stand up because my blood pressure is going up and I need to like chill because this is ridiculous. But I wanted to support the Harris family. Um, first of all, you have heard so many wonderful things about her. You know, I'm just, you know, she's a helper. She's a, a black woman. And most of us have these qualities, okay? It's not acknowledged. You guys don't acknowledge it. Diversity means, and here's what you have to change. You got, you got to change this. Um, diversity means um, individualism. It's about self. Domination. Columbus said that in his diary. Three-fifths of a man. All these things you see us as. Um, we're not respected. Um, we want to erase our history like we didn't do any wonderful things. Um, let's start with the lie, like lie to the um, in indigenous people. That's why they're not here. Um, you pee on us and call it lemonade. That's, that's, we're sitting up here pretending. You don't respect us. That's why we're here. So you need to learn to respect us. Because trust me, if you look at our history, you, ha you, 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 you get on your knees, really. Because we have done some monumental things in terms of caring and loving everybody. Enemies, we've taken people in, you know. So it's, um, we need to change. Y'all need to change. Thank you for your comment. You know. Thank you for your comment. Bernice Turner. Thank you. Also is in the house. Hey, <laughs> my name is Bernice Turner. I'm here to support the Harris family. Going to school with my oldest brother Leon Turner. I grew up hearing so much about the Omeda Harris Center. Again, I'm from East Palo Alto, but so many people I grew up with, you know, participated and was here with the family. I'm with Constance, and I am a part of the Black Descendants or Black Access to Spaces and Resources Coalition. I do support you, and I'm for you and with you. Thank you. We'll keep it as a bank. Thank you for your comment. Mia Yuki Fukaka? Fukaka? I apologize. My name is Mia Yuki Fukaka. Thank you. So, hello. I'm Mia Yuki Fukaka. I was born and raised right here in East Palo Alto, Belhaven community. I attended summer camps, Black History Month celebrations dance classes, and many more community events at the Oneta Harris Center. Up until the start of construction, my daughter attended summer camps there at Camp Menlo, and she learned how to swim there. The Oneta Harris Center has been a part of our community's history for generations past, and it will be for generations to come. If you change the name of the Oneta Harris Community Center, you will be erasing history. I say this because there is history in a name. There is history in the Oneta Harris name. There is history, black history, Menlo Park history, right here, community history. This proposed change feels very intentional. It feels targeted. And that is a terrible look for the so-called progressive Menlo Park. In the email you sent out last Friday, you wrote, and I quote, we want to hear what the community thinks and values. Please, City of Menlo Park, don't just hear us speak. Listen. Listen to our stories. Listen to the people of the Belhaven community. Listen to our wishes and grant us the respect that our community deserves by keeping the Oneta Harris name. 
and not changing it. And just to make a quick note, Bellhaven has gotten its flowers. It's on the map. This isn't about keeping Bellhaven somewhere. It's there. This is about keeping the Oneta Harris name where it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Antonio Lopez. I'll try to donate my time. Good evening, everybody. I'm here first and foremost. My name is Antonio Lopez. I have the honor to serve on the City Council of East Palo Alto. I'm here in support first and foremost for the Harris family. Uh, the gentleman who came first spoke, said that a lot of the young bloods don't know don't know the history. We haven't met Onetta Harris, and that's true. I grew up in the '90s. My pops came into East Palo Alto in the '80s when everybody knows how rough it was. And every day, I think about the people who gave their lives to make East Palo Alto a safer place. I think about the descendants of those who I'm in solidarity with. Imagine somebody taking your name. Imagine somebody taking your street taking your history, your past, your culture. What I don't understand from this whole process is last time I checked, we live in a democracy. And if the majority of the people are saying to keep this name, why are we letting one institution, one man, one company dictate that? Let's not get punked. Let's walk with our chest out in front. Let's fight back. I'm all for working together, but not if we're not on the same team. So I just want to close by saying we are in solidarity. We will continue to push the envelope and honor the Harris family. There's a lot of names to be said about who to honor, but let's honor, let's give flowers to those who can still smell it. Let's keep honoring the names of those who made it possible for me to be on the city council and speak to you today. Let's keep the road going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Edmund Harris Jr. They said I have a little donated time. Okay, I'll uh, introduce myself. Some of you guys don't know me. My name is uh, E.J. Harris, Edmund Harris. I'm Edmund Harris's son. Um, he is uh, one of eight children from Oneta. I'll take the mic because this is easier for me. He's one of eight children from Oneta. Um, I'm also Israel Harris's grandson. All right, Oneta, uh, the father of the family. Um, myself, I'm a uh, College graduate, I graduated in a history degree. I'm a teacher, Taekwondo school owner. I uh, coach AU basketball, also coach a high school basketball. I'm a head coach for a high school team, a community leader and mentor in my program. So I'm Onetta's grandson. I'm her legacy too. Um, it's incredible to be back here fighting for Onetta, but I was angry for a while, but what an honor to be in 2023 fighting for my grandmother's legacy and representing for her. And thank you guys for showing up. Um, protected, protecting Onetta's legacy fits into the theme of the today's climate, where leaders and special interest groups are attempting to rewrite or worse, destroy history. I love to visit, but are we in Florida? Just ask, are we changing all these history books? Um, as a reminder to support my claim, the Netta's Harris Community Center will become a historical site in 10 years. How can anyone with good moral even consider changing the name with that type of date so close in reach? That's amazing, 10 years from now, actually nine. Onez's legacy reaches far and wide, whether it was her community activism, feeding the hungry, or work in the Ravenswood School District. I recall meeting random people uh, from the area who rave about Mrs. Harris. One lady told me, Mrs. Harris didn't play. She never bothered you if you weren't doing anything. But if you did something, you knew you were in trouble and you were going to be held accountable. That's pretty powerful, because can you even imagine how many people she saved or deter from going down the wrong path? That is that's more than something to celebrate. And it has been celebrated from visiting college and NBA players who come to the park just to play pickup basketball. She also, thanks to my son who reminded me, she also was mentioned in the 2020 Olympics during the swim meet. One girl who actually was a lifeguard at the park who practiced there all the time, that was part of her story in the Olympics. So we might want to look up that and do a little bit more research about that as well. So we're clear. Last meeting, someone in the opposition mentioned that she wasn't nationally known. Well, I strongly disagree because she's internationally known. I mean, the Olympics, seriously, okay? Not to mention the fact in 2023 that we're literally fighting with Meta in the city of Menlo Park, which, will, which would most definitely qualify her story for an incredible amount of national attention. I mean, you guys are Zuckerbergers, 
going against the city, the community. I think that's a big deal, okay? Um, so again, we're not asking for the park, uh, for the name of the park or center to be named after anyone else other than Onetta. I am strongly encouraging again that all involved make the correct decision of preserving Onetta's legacy because we promise everyone in this room, everyone on Zoom and around the globe will not let it go until what's right is done. Thank you, we love Onetta. Thank you, thank you for your comment. David Harper Sr. One, one also a reminder of no clapping, sorry. I know, just doing my job. Hello, hello, David Harper, uh, business owner here in Menlo Park. Uh, start from just hair care right here on New Bridge Road. Um, from East Palo Alto in Menlo Park myself. I uh, worked for Nether Hills Community Center as, as a kid, went there as a kid. Um, like she said, you know, uh, we are Nether Harris. You know, we are. I didn't know her personally. I didn't grow up then, but she lived through us. Her soul is here right now. Her legacy is here right now. Her spirit is here right now. So we are on the Harris. We will fight for her like she fought for us. You know, and we are a reflection of her. So we are a reflection of the woman she was, how powerful she was. How you decide is a reflection of you. How y'all decide, the city of Miller Park is a reflection of how you feel about on the Harris. As I said, I didn't know her. I didn't know her personally, but I know her. I know her well. And I hope through all these meetings, you know her now too. I hope you know her. I pray you know her. You've heard our stories. You've heard our truths. You've heard about the stories about how the center impacted the youth. I'm one of the youth. I speak for all the African-American men in the community who were raised at O'Neill Harris Community Center. It changed our lives. I probably wouldn't be where I am right now as a business owner in Menlo Park if it wasn't for her. I wouldn't because her legacy is so strong that it impacted every youth in the community. Me, my friends, as I said, I worked there. So it changed me. Learned a lot in that community center. And I pray that it, the, the, it stays the same. Like I said, we are a reflection of her and how you decide is a reflection of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Pastor Bennett. Amen. Praise God. Certainly, I just want to speak to two things real quick. Uh, memory and, um, and history. Um, growing up, um, definitely as a youngster in East uh, Menlo Park, I uh, had all of my memories at the Oneta Harris Center. Um, I remember when they showed Bruce Lee movies for 25 cents. I could go there and see a Bruce Lee movie, and with 50 cents, I could get a hot dog. I could get potato chips and a soda. So when I had a dollar in my pocket, I was doing good. <laughs> and uh, those are the memories that, that, that we share. Um, my prayer is that you would never have to fight for your name. That, that's a prayer that I have that you would. It's an exhausting fight, um, and it's a frustrating fight. Um, but I want you to know that um, Ms. Harris was a, was a mom to the community. You know, I can recall being on campus and her having to steer me. She, you know, I'm getting kicked out of class because I was wearing Benny caps and I wasn't taking off my hat in class because that's just the way it was. And they was going to make fun of my nappy hair. So I, I leave class before I would take off my Benny cap. <laughs> and uh, Miss Harris was like, boy, if you don't get, get over here. Now, listen, we talking about education versus your hairstyle. Now, you need to get back in there, take off your Benny cap, and learn your lesson. And I would bow down my head and say, yes, Ms. Harris, and I'd go right back in class. Uh, the Bible speaks about um, the fathers always having to leave uh, a memorial, uh, something that was there that when the kids grew up, they would always ask, Father, what meaneth this sign? Uh, what meaneth this stone here? And they would always repeat the stories. Uh, when we take down the legacy and the name, uh, what happens is you kill curiosity. And, and what I want you to know is I know that Middle Park uh, is changing. 
I know that we're getting all type of nationalities in here. But one thing I like about truth is it's applicable to everybody. One thing I like about her spirit is applicable to everybody. So, so, so when you have Indian boys that's having some problems, guess what? They can go to Donetta's Harris Center, see something, and somebody asks, well, what mean is that? They say, let me tell you about this story, young man. And before you know it, her spirit has now come into the forefront. So, so we're not only killing history, but we're affecting our future. And I want you to know that her spirit reaches across all ethnic groups. Thank you for your comment. Okay. All right. All right. God bless Sorry. you. We're going to take some online um, speakers now. Uh, unfortunately, the first Zoom speaker that has their hand raised is just named Zoom user. Uh, so if you are logged in just as Zoom user, please address the commission. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Uh, we can barely hear you. OK, I'm sorry. Hopefully, it can. I don't know, it's turned up all the way. I'm hopefully you can hear me. Is that better? We can hear you. Okay, hi. I'm um, I'm Jennifer Fairley. I'm actually born and raised in Menlo Park, excuse me, East Menlo Park. Um also a young person started off at Onet Harris Community Center. My best friends to this day, I was at the community center since before I was what six or seven, basketball up early. Only safe haven we can go to. I lived across the street from Bell Haven School. It was not allowed to go there. So that spoke a lot. I was I was allowed to go to Oneta Harris Community Center, which was not across the street from my house because of the respect and the love that was given there, the opportunities that was made there. And again, it's, it's, it's funny that um, a name doesn't fit the quote unquote aesthetic of a newcomer, right? But as you can see, aesthetically unpleasing that you may think that the name is, it doesn't fit. Her spirit at the end of the day is still here and is very well alive. That's that's something you can't cover. You can't hide. You can't dismiss. You can't bulldoze over. You can't cover that up. So changing the name, honestly, is quite pointless. It's actually disrespectful to even think, to to. To, for this to even be a conversation is quite disrespectful. Leave it as is. Let that legacy continue. And we thank you. Thank you for your thank time. You. Thank you. Thank you. May I have your name? Jennifer Fairley. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Harry Ben. Hello, everyone. Hello. OK, I was a former member of the GPAC. It was the GPAC that negotiated updates to the general plan that unlocked commercial development all around Bay Bellhaven, such as the Willow Village Project and others, in exchange for community benefits for Bellhaven, paving the way for the MPCC and other community benefits. Imagine a situation where the single-use Ariaga Family Recreation Center were torn down the police headquarters, city council chambers, administration building, and Burgers Pool. In their place, a brand new multi-use fa facility was constructed that incorporated all of those buildings and more under one roof. Would you rubber stamp the whole project to be called the Ariaga Family Community Campus? Unfortunately, it appears that you and I are being bullied by people who mostly don't live in Menlo Park, vote or pay taxes here, to put the Onetta Harris name on a combination of public services that never had the Onetta Harris name on them including an aquatic center, youth center, senior center, and public services that were never on site of the property, including an adult library, children's library, and Red Cross emergency shelter. For more than 40 years, nobody here tonight has pushed for the Onetta Harris name over any of them. Meanwhile, actual residents who are mostly Hispanic for the past 20 years have been intimidated into not even showing up at these meetings. The MPCC is by far the largest investment in public services for the Bellhaven neighborhood in history. We would not be having this discussion if not for the efforts of three black women who pushed to make this investment a reality. That's history too. They deserve respect too. Um, I recommend that um, the building already has a name, the MPCC. 
and that we should uh, preserve that name and not honor any single individual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Claudia Lopez, and then I'm sorry, the second last name got cut off. Claudia Lopez. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, members of the community and commissioners. My name is Claudia Lopez Lupercio, and I was born and raised in East Menlo Park. It's upsetting that I'm here speaking to you today about this name change. Onetta Harris is our community icon. And just because a wealthy new member of the community paid for the shiny center doesn't mean that they have the right to delete our story and our beloved leader. The city of Menlo Park didn't care about us in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, but Onetta Harris and her family did. I clearly and vividly remember Mr. Harris. I'm not sure if he's in the public today. Uh, he was the only one that actually, in fact, helped me learn how to play basketball when I couldn't. That's the true testament of what a community does to have their back. I'm sorry? Sorry, I apologize. We just want to set the timer. Okay. So as a kid raised in Menlo Park in the 80s, it was clear that we were forced to fend for ourselves. Um, I, I'm just, quite frankly, I think a little upset that um, as new commissioners, I understand that you guys are mostly new, um, the history of, of how we struggled with crime, drugs, and safety uh, is something you guys don't seem to kind of acknowledge, right? Um, Onetta Harris and the family Harris uh, did what the city of Menlo Park never did. And uh, quite frankly, most of us were lucky to beat these odds. Are, we're lucky to go to college. And, and now, you know, we're going to be lucky to run for commissioners or city council one day as well so that we don't get fully pushed out, right? So I urge you to make one recommendation to city council, and that is to keep Onetta Harris. Thanks for the time, and um, I appreciate everyone in the community. Thank you. I don't have a name. It is the phone number ending in 0494. If your phone number ends in 0494, you can address the commission, please. Okay, hello? Hi, we can hear you. Hi, okay, this is uh, David Wheaton. Um, and uh, I've spoken before. Uh, I'm the uh, former assistant city manager in Menlo Park, but my family moved to Bell Haven in the 50s. I attended kindergarten uh, at Bell Haven School as uh, my first uh, educational process. But um, I, I just wanted to correct staff on a minor. Um, I think someone misspoke a little bit uh, because when they talked about Kelly Park, let me give you just a quick little bit of history, but they talked about place being named Kelly Park. Well, actually, it was a park. It was before those buildings were built. Um, it was literally a park, and it was open space, a ballpark. And part of what uh, Onetta Harris and other community leaders uh, were successful in doing uh, at the time was asking for uh, some of the same types of facilities in the Bill Haven neighborhood at Kelly Park that was as similar to what was being built or was built on the west side of town. Now, when I was assistant city manager there, uh, one of my departments, the Park and Rec Department and um, administrative services, personnel, and so on, uh, one of the things we focused on, and part of the reason why I took the job, because I was told uh, that I can make the improvements in Bell Haven uh, that were very well needed, and no one had ever taken the leadership. There was much talk about doing things, uh, and I was inspired to come back because um, 
Onetta Harris inspired me and mentored me all along uh, from the time I was young to the time I was in college. And one of the things she used to always tell me was the most important thing in us going to college was to be able to come back and give to our community. It's the only reason why I took the job in coming back to Menlo Park. I was recruited uh, to come back to Menlo Park. And I took the job knowing that I was given free uh, uh, free leeway to do what needed to be done. And so we accomplished a lot. That library that you sit in now is one of the things that we were able to I build with the right community here. school district. Up, but Onanda Harris, to change the name, is disrespectful, I think, to the entire community and the efforts of we're people who put in more time and blood, Thank sweat, you. and Thank tears. You uh, Sorry about that. Marilyn? Okay, yeah. Marilyn? Yes, here I am. Hi, um, my name is Marilyn DeRuin, and I also have been here before to speak. I grew up in Menlo Park. And uh, again, I think I said it before, we were the first Black families to live in that neighborhood, the first Black children to grow up there. And as you have already heard from everybody else, Mrs. Harris was the advocate for our community at the Menlo Park City Council meetings and fought for everything that we had as young people growing up there. And I think um, one of the things um, that wasn't mentioned, I believe Mrs. Harris was also very instrumental in getting the Opportunities Industrial Center West there that uh, provided job trainings and um, job uh, uh, job jobs that were uh, given in um, were provided in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley was just up and coming in the 70s. And I myself, I went to OICW and received a um, certificate in key punch operator where my first job was at NASA, Ames Research Center. And then from there, I went to Lockheed Missiles and Space Company. So these are things that, you know, um, the city now, you guys sitting there, you guys don't know the things that Mrs. Harris uh, did for us growing up in that community. Uh, as I mentioned before, free summer camps, all these things Mrs. Harris brought there. She was the voice of the voiceless. My mother was not the kind of person to go to city council meetings. She was very quiet, uh, stayed to herself. But Mrs. Harris's voice spoke for parents that did not go to city council meetings. So these are things that, you know, I myself, I want you to know. Um, Ken already spoke. I know her son, Freddie. Freddie was our BSU uh, president growing up in high Thank you for your comment. Sorry. Pablo Aguilera. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, hi, my name is Pablo Aguilera. I'm a resident. I'm also the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion partner at the Sequoia Union High School District. Um, you know, I literally just got off uh, the board meeting for the school district, Zoom, in order to find the same thing. And I think what we're seeing, and I'm also a history teacher in the district as well, Sequoia High School and also Woodside High School, um, we're seeing a lot of erasure of Black history. And uh, that's something that's causing a lot of effects in our youth today and our communities. And I think that's something that we got to recognize. And I understand when people are saying, well, we, demographics are changing and all that, but that doesn't mean you have to erase history, right? And I think as a Latino who moved into Belhaven as well, you know, there's a lot of anti-Blackness in the Latino community as well that we got to talk about. And I think it's important for Latinos, who include Afro-Latinos, to learn Black history, and that includes of our communities. So the recommendation that you should be making is to keep the name Aneta Harris Community Center. And honestly, the rest, it's called the pool at Aneta Harris Library. Aneta Harris, like, there's, come on, like, that's what, just what we do everywhere else, right? You don't need, I mean, the bench outside Aneta Harris Community Center. Like, let's stop erasing the history, put the plaques up, teach the kids about the history, because that's incredibly important that we're 
starting to see that erasure in our classrooms at this high school district. I'm seeing it. I'm finding it now. So just make a simple recommendation and let's just keep it the way it is. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you for your comment. Maricela? Maricela? If you can hear us. Hola, buenas noches. Me escuchan? No. Sí, pues escuchando todos la, los comentarios públicos, voy a ser muy breve. Estoy aquí para que se guarde el nombre de Oneta Harris, ya que, o sea, esto me trae muchos recuerdos porque mis niños cuando pequeños yo los llevaba a clases de natación en el centro de Oneta Harris y se me hace muy mala idea de que ahora quieran poner como, como a votación de que se escoja un nombre. Eh, escuchando todas las cosas buenas que hizo la señora Oneta Harris, lo que debería de hacer el Consejo Municipal de Menlo Park es honrar a la señora Oneta Harris guardando su nombre, su legado, todo el trabajo que hizo por la comunidad, hacerle un monumento en su honor con su historia, honrándola y no quitando el nombre de Oneta Harris. Buenas noches a todos. Listening to everybody's comments in the public tonight, I would like to uh, express my opinion and I really want us to keep the name of Oneta Harris for everything that I remember that I did in this community center. My kids, they went to learn how to swim in that community center. So I don't think it is a good idea to have a vote to change this name. I can hear from all these good people, all the wonderful things that this woman did. And I believe Menlo Park Council, uh, we should honor her and we should make her a big monument in her name, in her memory. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for anybody who's dialing in and isn't here in person, the second comment in English was the translator translating the Spanish comment that was given to the commission. Ralamu Cache? Shashe. Ralamu, sorry. Yes, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Um, it's quite a wound to the heart to have to see something good and positive that was done is on the block to be undone. And it's just not fair, it's not right. The center needs to stay in place and name of Onetta Harris Community Center. And it led me so much a long time ago to write about the value and the importance of what women do to make this world be a better place. And I wrote this poem. I'm the poet laureate for the city of East Palo Alto. And it's called, That's How Dedicated Women Are. They sometimes forget their rest just to be sure that they're giving their best. They realize their great potentials without ever having to own any credentials. That's how dedicated women are. They unselfishly render services to others in their roles as daughters, sisters, relatives, wives, and or mothers. That's how dedicated women are. They do what they must in the best interest of the principal without creating ill feelings and or jeopardizing the lives of masses of people. That's how dedicated women are. That's how dedicated women are. That's why this center needs to remain in the name of Onetta Harris Community Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And I have a hand raised for Kenneth Harris. We did already have a Kenneth Harris speak. Um, Oh, it's the junior. Okay, so Kenneth Harris Jr. Kenneth, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? You can, yes. Hey, yes, um, my name is Ken Harris Jr., grandson of Onetta Harris. So I just want to say, when you walked into that building, the first thing you noticed was a picture hanging up. 
Once you learned her name, whenever you saw the picture again, it became impossible to forget the name of that building. It stuck in your mind. When we talk about generations of people who were, if you were to say to them, Onetta Harris Community Center, a smile would come to their face because it has some, such a, a positive impact on the entire community for so long. Um, a lot of people remember that name as the location for their first summer camp, first basketball game, first swimming lesson, or most importantly, where they met their lifelong best friends. So much in this community has already changed. I ask that the name Onetta Harris Community Center name remain here to stay. Some legacies should never be tampered with. Onetta Harris Community Center is a cemented landmark to generations of people. Most people think from A to C, but Onetta Harris's actions showed that she thought from A to Z. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Nicole Harris Quat. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I, um, I'm i Nicole Quat, uh, granddaughter of Onetta Harris, and I wanna thank everybody who's been showing up for the past three years to all of these meetings and speaking. Um, I was raised in Menlo Park, moved away, went to college, Sacramento State, came back to Menlo Park and resided there for a while as an adult. And in those adult years that I lived there, I also managed the Wells Fargo downtown where a lot of clients would come in and sit at my desk and ask me, by any chance, are you related to an Onetta Harris? And it just kind of like warmed my heart to have all of these seniors in the West Menlo Park, East Menlo Park and East Palo Alto come in and speak to me about my grandmother and how great she was in the community on both sides. And I just think that that says a lot about who she is. And I feel like City Council has heard everyone speak over the past three years and they know, they now know how special she was. So I'm just here to just speak my part on keeping my grandmother's legacy alive. I hope that the City Council has heard all these voices and are heavily taking that this name should remain the same in consideration. Um, the community has spoken. A lot of people have moved away, but a lot of people are still there. A lot of people still work there, have business, businesses there. Um, their voices count, even if they have moved away. It's the history that's still there and still needs to remain. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to city council for forming these meetings, listening to the community. And I, I pray and I believe strongly that from what we've all heard, city council will do the right thing and let her name remain. Please don't erase the history. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Adriana Walker. Hi, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Um, I'm Adriana Walker, um, Vice Chair of Housing Commission, and, and most importantly, a resident of the Bellhaven community, married into uh, the family and, and uh, wasn't born and raised here, but my husband and his family are lifelong members and, and residents here. Um, just to hear black, brown, and white residents and, and people alike voice their passion and memories and, and longing to keep the Onetta Harris. It's, it's, it, it speaks volumes. I'm excited to see, maybe not the doing away with or placing her name over the gym, maybe just allowing the building overall to be the Onetta Harris Center and then allocating specific names for the buildings inside of it as a whole, um, that we, we we can honor her and honor the family that's been fighting for this to be here. Um, bringing in something new doesn't have to mean that we do away with the old, we can <laughs> usher in the old with the new. And this was something that was placed on a building in honor of her. Um, although it was the rec or the gym, we can, I'm just throwing it out there. We can place it on the overall building. And that way it still leaves, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to say that it leaves the option of renaming the or placing new names on the other buildings if we so choose. And uh, I know at the last meeting it was mentioned that, you know, there are so many people in the community who have done things and everyone should be honored. Well, in that case, we can place a memoriam or whatever those things are, plaques with, other 
local residents who we do want to give recognition to, as well as um, the continued recognition of Miss Onetta Harris. I've never met her, but my husband has fond memories there. His mother, his grandmother, his aunts, his uncles, they all have memories of Onetta Harris. My son, I taught him how to swim when he was one at the pool. So, you know, I, it would be it would be something to see us really honor her. I know it's not marketable anymore. I know people feel like, oh, they've, the family's moved away or whatever have you. Well, they've been displaced because it's expensive in the Bay Area. So let's just acknowledge that. It's not that they want to leave. You know, we can't afford to be here. So um, yeah, it would be great to just allow her name to be placed over the overall building and um, allocate different names to the different sectors of the building. And I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Adriana. Ada? Hi, Gata, if you can hear us, you can address the commission. I think we can come back to that one. We have just a couple uh, more. In well, while we're going to our next chair, we, we get a sense of how many more online speakers and or other speakers. So uh, one online for right now and then three in person. Okay, just trying to figure out in the yeah. break. Okay. Sorry. Yasmeen Oakley. Good evening. My name is Yasmeen Abdusami Oakley. I am a legacy East Palo Altan. I come from a family that came to East Palo Alto in the 1950s. And my mother's name is Jerry Dillard Oakley. And I just want to say her name because she is a woman of the same heart of Onetta Harris. And um, I'm here to support the Harris family. Thank you to Mr. Ken Harris, who is been leading this fight for the last several years. It's taken a toll on his health. Um, I'm sure all the family members um, are so dedicated and so tired of having to come here. Um, there's nothing new that I can say here. Everything has already been said for the last three years. Um, you know what this community wants and it is really up to you to deliver what the community wants. Um, my time left tonight, I will dedicate, um, I just want to say to the East Palo Alto and East Menlo Park community, I am so inspired, though I'm tired of having to fight about this, I'm inspired by this community, how beautiful we are, how much beautiful history has been resurrected through this Onetta Harris name continuance. And I want the community to know that no matter what, no matter what is decided with this commission or with this city council, we have something beautiful and we can raise money. The sky is the limit for what we want to see in our community. Even if our cities don't partner with us, even if our commissions don't partner with us, we have a future in this community. Yes, we've been purged out of this community through economics and through um, over-policing, but we have a future here. Our history is not just Black history, it is American history. We have been on this landmass for 500 years. And what is going on with this name continuance is like what they did to Rosewood. It is like what they did um, to all of these towns that were Black American towns, except you did not use violence in the physical sense. You used violence in the economic sense to purge Black Americans out of this community. So don't be a part of that. Don't be a part of your history of colonizing history and moving Black people and displacing Black Americans out of their space. So I'm pissed off. I do not want to have to keep coming, taking time out of our busy lives. These people work. 
they don't have a lot of money to burn and to burn gas and burn I'm sorry. coal. Thank you for your comments. You're right. welcome. Everybody have a great evening. God bless East Palo Alto and Menlo Park. Thank you. Arthur Gray. Thank you. As it was said, my name is Arthur Gray. I moved here in 1963. There was a park called Flood Park across the river, across the catwalk. We needed that to go to to go swimming. There was no pool over here at Kelly Park, which was the name of it at that time. When we entered the other side on the catwalk, Menlo Park, Bell Haven was all black. When we entered the other side on the other side of the catwalk, a lot of times police officers harassed us as kids and told us to get back on our side. Okay? So Onetta Harris and Lou Ann Bradford came to our defense and fought for us to have this park the way it is now. And for you guys or anyone to try to take this park, this name away from those people that brought this park to us, the black community, even though it may not be black now, but at that time, there was no white folks here. We were on the east side. The white folk was on the west side, and we were not allowed to go there. I was one of the first set of blacks to be bused to Atherton, Menlo Atherton. That's where I graduated from. We was not taught anything over there because they didn't know how to deal with us. I got my education after I graduated and went to college for a short period of time. And I um, I still live here in Menlo Park, and I don't want to move. I've been threatened and uh, harassed by the new people, <laughs> uh, but I'm standing my ground. And um, for for someone to try to take away from us what leaders have brought to us, which is Luann Bradford and Onetta Harris is an insult to all the black people that's in here. Thank and all the people that comments. came up your time is in up the 50s and 60s. I'm 70 years old now. And that have left a mark within my heart for you guys, I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, for people to want to take what was established for us because of us away. Thank you, Arthur, for your comments. Thank you. Gail Dixon. I'm uh, Gail Wilkerson Dixon, and I wanted to put that Dixon in there because Onetta Harris was first Dixon. <laughs> there's a lot of Dixons, just like there's a lot of Harris's, her grandsons and everything. Oh, oh, okay. Um, there are a lot of Dixon nephews, first cousin, twin, not a twin, but big. Um, her brother, Elvis Robert Dixon Sr., was an entrepreneur. They all have drive. It was something in their blood. He owned a trucking company and a taxi cab company. And that's how I got in family because my husband saw that in me. I was telling you about that last time. And her great nephew owns a trucking company and he's a, he's a master chef to me. Um, but there's a lot of uh, good things running through our veins. And um, it shouldn't be a race. I was I'm thinking I was gonna say something about Coochie. Austin. <laughs> He lived across the street from me on Henderson Avenue. We grew up together. And he was talking about how we had to walk across the, the catwalk because they wouldn't put the bus on this side of the, the highway. We had to go across the catwalk and get on that bus to go to Menlo Atherton. I graduated with Lindsey Buckingham and Sidney Nix. That's how old I am. 
I said all this. Sorry, don't Gail. erase our history. Don't erase it, okay? Give her a statue, name Terminal Avenue, Onetta Harris, because she lived on that. It went, ran straight into Kelly, Kelly Bark. Thank you, Gail, for your comments. Thank you. And that was our last public comment. So I'll turn it over to you, Chair. Okay. If you're, if it's okay with you, Commission, can we take a five minute break? Are you guys okay with that? Everybody okay? Okay, we're gonna take a five minute recess. All right, thank you. With, with that, public comment is closed and we will open the item for commission discussion. Okay. So at this point, um, I'm going to ask Sean to um, take, um, to bring back um, any documentation you think would be um, pertinent to have on the screen. And then are there, before we move into our discussion, are there any commissioners that have any clarifying questions need answered by city? Okay, and then if you could use your mic as well. I have a clarifying question to ask. Um, in one of the slides, you talked about how um, there would be name some kind of nameplate inside uh, for the individual five programs and also something on the outside how large and prominent are the signs on the inside so you talked about if there if there was one for the rec center how big would it be would it be just a little thing on the wall or would it be able to be seen everywhere inside once you walked in can you give us a little more detail about what it would look like uh, you Yes, thank you for the question. So there are various room size uh, signs, as Mr. Howard kind of talked about a little bit in the presentation. Um, so each of the, the rooms has a sign kind of to the entry of the room. And, uh, you know, I would say the sign is, is about a couple feet square, maybe, for, for each of, like, the room signs. Um, and as Mr. Howard mentioned, there's a, a sign that would go over the entrance of the, of the main building. And um, then also a sign out kind of near the street, near Terminal Avenue, that's uh, you know quite lar much much larger that one could see from a car. Um, in addition, um, there hasn't been because the process is still kind of underway as far as like names or dedications. You know that that could change depending on the, the length of names and any other direction that might come from the City Council as far as like you know should the signs be a certain size? Should they have additional information. I think we heard mention about like telling a story maybe on like a dedication plaque or something in the front of the building. So kind of the outcome of this process would uh, kind of inform how large the sign needs to be. Um, I think when your question so also was about like if there was a plaque kind of at the front entry, um, and that would be the idea that it would be right when you kind of enter the building and, um, and large and prominent enough like you can't, can't miss it. Um, just one question on it. guidance on how we can interpret the name policy that was adopted by City Council or refreshed by City Council recently. Um, I have a view on how we could interpret it, but I'll come to that later. But I just want to check it in the official guidance. It seems to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we should be reluctant to change the name of existing facilities. Uh, and I think there's some room for interpretation on how we can apply that here. But sure, I just want to check if there's any further guidance that we should be taking into account if I'm interpreting that correctly. Uh, thank you for the question. So put the naming policy on the screen. Um, I think you're referring to uh, item number one in the policy, which I'll just read it for folks who can't read that type. It says, it shall be the policy of the city not to change the name of any existing city facility, particularly one whose name has city, regional, or national significance, unless there are the most extraordinary circumstances of city regional or national interest and no other new facility can be so designated. So this, um, I believe, was in the 1980s version of the 
naming policy. I mentioned that the city council updated it in March. They really didn't change the essence of the policy. They just kind of updated it. So that's been there the whole time. Um, I think to your question, um, it, the policy, I can't interpret it beyond the words that are right there, right? So basically it says not to change the name of any existing facility. I just want to be clear, I think, um, what we are looking at here is a newly constructed facility. It is a new facility. It did not exist before. It now exists. Totally want to um, acknowledge that there was a facility there before. It has great meaning to many people in the community, and I think that's a, a very important factor, and we've heard a lot about it. I just think, again, to your question about the letter of the policy, it really is talking about like an existing facility. Are there anybody, any other commissioners have any questions for city staff? Okay, okay so um, we're going to open up to a general discussion and then it will lead into the matrix that Sean and city staff have created. Um, I know from my opinion and from hearing the community and hearing the language that's um, that has been written about naming it. Um, I know for me, um, I would like to continue it to, in existence, um, the name of Anetta Harris. And um, I've always thought that we were going to continue that name and that this was an opportunity for other members of the community to maybe also um, find ways to acknowledge other um, community members to honor them in more specific buildings. Um, I know we as a commission have give, gotten information based on what people have written in about um, various different people for various parts of the center. Um, I know I don't know as much, so I know for me I'm more inclined to say that I would want to keep the general building considered as a community campus and an inclusive name. And if commissioners would like to chime in and talk about specific buildings, um, go for it. But um, I think for me, I'm just going to, um, even with the matrix, want it to just be an overall campus name and open to have different parts be named to honor different community members because I what I think. Anybody else? Um, yeah, so, so first I want to say um, that I am very sorry for all of you that have had to come out so many times, and it has been really um, helpful for me to hear um, so much of the history and so much of the stories, and it's been very um, beautiful to hear about an IRS. So thank you very much for, for all of that. Um, and uh, yeah, so from my perspective, I agree with you. I don't, and I, I would not actually recommend anything else besides United Arab Community Center. I would like. I I would prefer for us to just have um, one recommendation. Um, and I agree with you that I think that we should just keep the internal names, the library, the pool. There's really no need to add names to it, um, especially because there is no history there. Um, I also do want to acknowledge that Meta gave a very generous gift, and we should obviously thank them and recognize them uh, and a dedication plaque on the on the exterior. So. So again, just wanted to reiterate again the thanks for everybody. I've received an education. Um, I've only been in Menlo Park for five years, uh, so I'm I'm still new to the area and new to Belhaven. So again, I value the education, so I appreciate it, and thanks for coming out. Um, uh, so I'm guided a little bit by the name policy, which I know is sp not specifically. In fact, the way Sean worded it was very careful, which was um, you shouldn't change the names of existing buildings. This is a new building, but I interpret it as. This is a continuation. So we should, I think the spirit of that, I, I take to mean, I'd like to kind of keep the names going and sort of it's in, in accordance with the naming policy in terms of spirit and also I think what people want. Um, maybe one slight difference though is, there were five programs, I think those names should continue going forward, essentially the same names. 
the uh, on the flight notes. They, sh they should continue going forward. There was no overall name for the campus previously. Unofficially, I know it was called by some Junetta Harris campus, but there was no overall official name. But, and if it may, maybe this is a clarifying question, just to make sure I understand, but my understanding is there was no overall official name for the center as Junetta Harris Club. But one of the pieces it was, but not overall. So my suggestion would be if, there, if a proposal is to try and keep everything the same going forward, I would do that. But what I think that means is we have five programs. One of them will be called the Anota Harris Community Campus, and everything else will be called the boring names they have. The overall name, I think, should be something like the Bellhaven Community Center, which is boring. If people want to unofficially call it the Anota Harris Community Center going forward, that's what happens in the past. They can do so. But the official name should be, I think, something more boring, such as the Bellhaven Community Center and the Renata Harris name preserved for one of the five programs. So maybe that's a slight difference. I just want to throw that out there as an option for discussion as well. Again, I want to reiterate thanks for all of you who have come out so many evenings. I know it's frustrating, but it is sort of democracy in action uh, and hard and emotional and upsetting, but thank you for your time. We really do appreciate it, and we have heard you. Um, I uh, want to point out that on the naming policy, I think if we consider this a new building, we should be looking at number four, which is has four bullet points. And I think all three, the first three also fit and um, apply to having Onetta Harris Community Center be the name of the overall facility because there's a clear and compelling connection to significant local places, communities, neighborhoods, history, geographical, etc. And the second one, inclusion, belonging, access, fairness, and justice. So, um, and the third one, a deceased person, Onetta Harris, who's been gone for more than five years. So. I think all three of those together, uh, along with the outpouring of support, I, I've heard no other name uh, mentioned more than in passing, including Mark Zuckerberg's. So um, maybe the official city name uh, wasn't for all five programs, but I do think the community thought of it that way. The, the bus lines thought of it that way. People who lived in other parts of Menlo Park, I've lived here for 30 years, thought of it that way. So for that reason and for the just the history of it, um, I think the overall center should be named Onetta Harris. And then the boring names can be for the other ones. That's what I think. So anybody else? Just interject quickly while the commission's deliberating. If you would please be so kind as to refrain from like reacting one way or the other so that they can each, each say their piece. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, so I also wanted to thank everyone that came out um, for sharing um, about Onetta Harris and about what she's done for the community and about the um, the values that she's embodied in this community. I've really appreciated that. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge that it's often only marginalized communities that do need to defend and advocate for their history to be included and continue. And so I'm sorry that you've had to come out so many times to, to do this. Um, before I get to the naming part, I also just wanted to make a suggestion uh, for city staff with the new library in the community campus, um, in the community center. Um, is there a way to have some sort of display kind of documenting the history of both Menlo Park, but especially like the Bellhaven community? Um, there were so many people that were mentioned in, in addition to Onetta Harris, but 
it was often like the education taking place here, uh, how I knew about it and not from any sort of like formal um, like display or documentation that's, that's publicly ava available. So I feel like that could be a really great addition. Um, I support what has been mentioned before, community campus, Oneta Harris, and then keep kind of just the Bellhaven Pool, Bellhaven Library, um, kind of the more boring names to go with that. So, um, yeah. Okay, if I could just respond uh, for the suggestion about the library. I know that the librarians are very excited about reflecting and displaying local history in the new facility. Hello. I feel very uncomfortable talking into a mic. <laughs> um, um, so, um, yeah, there were several members of the community who spoke tonight um, expressing frustration about having to come out so often. But I just wanted to express my appreciation for the frustration that you've gone through and to say that the silver lining to that is that I know who Annetta Harris is now. I've always known of that building being referred to as the Oneta Harris building, but I had no idea who she was any more than I knew who Jack Lyle was before starting on the commission or Carl A. Clark, who's, uh, we have a park named after. So uh, I think that this process has been an educational experience for the entire city. So thank you for all of the stories that were so personal that, uh, that every member of the community here shared with us in helping us to come to an understanding. Um, uh, I also, there was a gentleman here earlier who spoke, who's gone now, but he mentioned something about um, uh, the African American community needing to resort to acts of civil disobedience to be heard and um, uh, and uh, every time the audience was asked to not clap, I thought, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right, I know. <laughs> Good job. But appreciate you, Chair, as well. <laughs> it's cultural. It's cultural. Yes, yes. So uh, appreciating that, that cultural characteristic as well. Um, so uh, I, I think that uh, in the community and in the memory of people and, um, uh, you know, just sort of the spirit of Oneta Harris lives in that building, regardless of whether it is officially documented anywhere. Um, and I think it would be a natural progression for the entire center to be named after Ms. Harris. And um, as for the other names inside, um, I don't know if anyone has strong feelings about it. I don't know if I feel particularly well-informed enough uh, about the other names that were suggested to go into detail about the, the other names, um, or whether I think that you necessarily even need to stick with the so-called boring names, um, although I want to point out that the name Bellhaven itself has got uh, a very colorful uh, and interesting history as well. Um, uh, so um, uh, I don't know if we, I, I mean, I definitely can say that I would uh, propose Oneta Harris for the entire facility um, and the smaller facilities or the, you know, the sub facilities could be an opportunity for more discussion um, and a way for the community to honor, um, you know, other, other people and to discuss those and create more awareness of who those people are. Um, you know, such as the principal who was, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. See, that's why I think it, <laughs> it's an opportunity for more discussion. Um, that's my take. Hi, uh, my name is Juan Lee. I'm also a Bellhaven resident. Um, I, I did want, I kind of echo everyone's comments here, um, but I also wanted to thank Pam Jones. Um, she's been uh, a stalwart community member. I know she leads a lot of uh, uh, community related activities. So I actually wanted to second her recommendation in uh, naming the overall campus Bellhaven Community Center, but also um, while preserving Oneta Harris for the Recreation Center, and then somehow incorporating Billy Ray White in one of the building names as well. 
And I, I don't think this is, my recommendation is not by no means trying to erase history at all. In fact, there are multiple locations within the building itself where we can, um, uh, you know, write down the history that you guys, you know, uh, very generously elucidated today. So it could be the library, there's a uh, mural space uh, by the stairway. And I also wanted to recommend that we consider renaming terminal, maybe at, in the very least uh, as a honorary name to Onera Harris Avenue or something like that. I think that would be helpful. Why are you advocating for the overall campus name to be Bell Haven versus Anita Harris? Gotcha. So, uh, as a uh, Bell Haven resident, uh, the the the, ge the geography does resonate for me. For me. Um, a lot of times, I do. I, I've, I've identified myself as being a Bell Haven resident rather than a Menlo Park resident, and there's considerable history here uh, with that ge geography as well. I'm not. Uh, I can't go into it now, but there's a lot of tremendous history with that. And uh, in, I think this piece will end being incorporated into Melnold Park. So by no means am I a history expert, but um, I think we can still preserve the memory and uh, what Oneta contributed to the community. Um, but uh, you know, naming the cam overall campus uh, to be more geographically centered, as Pam Jones suggested earlier today. I'm I'm curious for the for the um, the commissioners. So there is a there is one aspect to say this is this is Bell Haven, and another another opinion could be hey this is a, another Menlo Park community center, and I guess one question I have is if we named it. Bell Haven and we made it so Bell Haven forward, does that divide us more than it brings us together? I mean, I would love for this community center to be a place where people from all over Menlo Park come versus just like I hope that people from all over come to Burgess and come to the other centers. And so I just, I worry a little bit to say that this is Bell Haven and create this feeling that this is for Bell Haven residents when this is we should feel like one Menlo Park. I th I think we should feel like one Menlo Park community. So I know. Yeah, I would say. Um, I mean, I still support Oneta Harris as the community campus name. I think an argument for Bell Haven would be something along the lines of like the history of the neighborhood. It was often kind of left out of the main facilities in Menlo Park, and so the Bell Haven residents advocated for the community center here. And so it's kind of honoring that legacy. Um, I think that could kind of be a strong argument for calling it Bell Haven to honor, again, that legacy of like why it was originally created. Um, I also see the argument for what you're suggesting here is kind of like a, we are all Menlo Park and that is, I think, a compelling argument as well. Um, again, I'm, I personally support the Oneta Harris community campus as the name, but I think calling it the Bell Haven uh, community campus could again be honoring that that legacy of the original intent of it. Just um, maybe picking up one of your comments that if it's called the Bellhaven Center, maybe people may think of it as mostly for Bellhaven residents. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. So to call it the Bellhaven Community Center would create a sense of ownership amongst folks in Bellhaven. Um, I don't know if I, if I live west of the park, I wouldn't think of it as that's for someone else is not for me i don't think i would think that so i actually think calling it Haven is a way to create ownership is for bell haven residents primarily yes they're going to be they live here and it's a way for people to kind of get a sense of confidence that they will be able to use facilities and so on so i think it's a good thing actually not a bad thing okay so i think we have I, I forgot to say this earlier. Um, there were people, um, and there are um, on the commission as well, who called in and had differing opinions. Um, at the end of the day, I hope that this is a unifying experience for the community and that it doesn't divide people who who had differences of opinion. Um, uh, everyone came out, everyone's a part of the community. 
we, we are all entitled to disagree, our own opinions. And I, I hope that everyone lives happily ever after from, <laughs> from here on. If I also may just add a comment, thank you. Um, so I completely understand that the previous campus did not have an overall name. However, I think this process is specifically for to hear from the community and to hear what they would like the overall name um, to be moving forward. And it sounds like it was colloquially called the Oneida Harris Center. And I think we have heard from the community. And so I do support calling the overall campus the Oneida Harris campus. And if we would like to call the individual, um, like the pool or the recreation center, the Bellhaven, um, what have you, pools, I think that could be a way to give that ownership that you were talking about that is also um, very important. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, one thing I did want to address is that we were given two separate folders that had petitions in them, and I haven't really seen what's inside of the folders. I don't know if any of you have, but what I'm assuming is that we have potentially hundreds of names signing um, signatures collected, 163. I'm assuming they're not the same. They're two different. And so I don't know how we have this. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't mean to cut you off. I, I appreciate the comments, but we just have to talk amongst ourselves right now. What I think for these is that we want to make sure they get into the public record. And then along with whatever our decision is for our recommendations, these also go to the city council along with all the other um, information that's been collected. So um, the assumption, I think, without all of us examining these, is that we've got maybe 400 signatures here from the community all advocating the same thing. So I just want to make sure that we put it on our record that we have accepted those. We're, we They factor into all the other comments we've received, and then those are going to make their way into the city record and also to city council in support of um, one name in consideration. Um, also, I've been a resident of Menlo Park for 23 years and raised my three children here, came over to the Oneta Harris Center many times uh, for sporting events and other things that my kids would do. I think colloquially, it's known as the Oneta Harris Center. <laughs> What, whether one segment of it is called the Oneta Harris Community Center and then there are others. I think anyone who didn't know where Oneta Harris was or the pool in Bellhaven at the Oneta Harris Center. So for me, it's always made sense that the entire uh, campus is called the Oneta Harris Community, Community Center or the Oneta Harris Campus in Bellhaven, however we name it. Um, one thing I don't think I'm completely clear on through all the history that we've had is when it was named the Oneta Harris Center, and I thank the person that brought us this, this um, newspaper to see it at the time, was um, if the council at the time that they were designating the community center to be the Oneta Harris Community Center, if they were also thinking of it in a campus-wide manner. I don't know what other aspects of the, the senior center and the youth center and the pool were there at the same time or not, but it seems to me that the general um, intent was to have it be known as a campus. So uh, I personally also am in support of naming it the Oneta Harris uh, Community Campus. It sounds to me from what we're all talking about that we have pretty much two suggestions right now that we want to put to uh, city council, uh, the Bellhaven Community Campus and the Oneta Harris Community Campus. And, um, you know, for, for newcomers to Menlo Park, and we have newcomers coming every single day, we're a growing community, I think 
having the pool in Bellhaven at the Oneta Harris Community Campus makes a lot of sense, and it invites anyone to learn about the history of this region and obviously a very special neighbor to us, the Love family. So those are those are my comments. I am too young and too new to the community to have had the privilege of meeting Oneta Harris, but I do want to say thank you to all of you who showed up today because her story and her spirit lives on in all of you and in the stories that you shared. So I appreciate that so much. Um, and, and I'm grateful, though apologetic, that you all are here having to spend this time with us this evening. My feeling on this is in line with the other commissioners in that I think the default should be to keep the name. And, you know, as someone who's young and tech savvy, I went online and I searched on the internet and I said, what else have we ever called this? And there are tweets from, you know, years ago from Menlo Park, this official city Twitter account saying, it's too hot, come to the cooling center at the Oneta Harris Community Center. And so from a colloquial standpoint, I understand the splitting of hairs and the difference between a pre-existing facility, like a physical space and a new space, but it feels like it's a colloquialism to say that the building was just the gym, that name was just the gym and it wasn't, it didn't apply to the whole space. And then there's just so much overwhelming support from all of the people that have showed up, all of the voices that we've heard, I really feel that the burden of proof should be to name it, to be on anyone to say, what else would you name it? And I haven't heard any compelling arguments otherwise. And you know, while as a commission, I do think we have the opportunity to add up to three options. And I think it would be useful to consider Bellhaven Community Center as a secondary option. I also want to point out that if we do that, we're doing that in some ways in opposition to the voices that we've heard in this meeting and the prior meeting to offer it as a second option because it's kind of not listening to the voices of the community. So I, I just wanna say that that's my opinion. I think we should keep it, um, we should name it the Oneta Harris Community Center as the overall name. And for the secondary programs, I think, you know, it is, so valuable to kind of keep the stability of the brand of these spaces, like, you know, potentially preserve the existing names or provide one or two options in those areas for the city to consider honoring additional members of the community who have stories that should be heard. Yeah, one thing, one thing that has, I've been thinking a lot about as we have been talking is that the reason that we all exist, the reason this exists is because we are supposed to be representatives of the community. Like it's actually not, I would say that it's not my job to have a strong opinion. My job is to listen to the community and to sort of share what the community believes, right? And that's the reason that we exist and the reason that the council has, council listens to, well, we, we make a recommendation and that goes to the Parks and Recreation Commission and the Parks and Recreation Commission makes a recommendation to the city council, but ultimately it all comes from the community. And it's just like, it's pretty overwhelming. I just have, I've heard except maybe in this process, we've heard literally hundreds of people either write their signatures down or have come to speak. And I think we've heard maybe three people that have had anything different than Annetta Harris. And so even if I had a different opinion, I don't think my opinion is valid. I, I think that I am a spokesperson for the community and it feels pretty overwhelming that the community wants this. And I, I don't really, and again, I think we talk a lot about splitting hairs. It, to me, it is splitting hairs to just say, um, it wasn't technically the Annetta Harris. It was the Annetta Harris Community Center. In the eyes of the community, it was. And the, and the community wants us to be the center. These are the people that are gonna go there every single day. And so my feeling is that we should be the spokespeople for the community and call it the Annetta Harris Community Center. And I, I agree with that. And I, I'm not sure what the procedure is from here, if you're gonna have a motion for whatever, but if we do vote to have two options for the overall name, I do think we should convey the number of votes that were for one name versus another if, if that's what ends up happening. Can I just make one comment? Uh, one, 
I certainly learned a lot and appreciate the testimonies of, of everyone here. Um, certainly a vibrant uh, energy around Ms. Harris and what she did uh, for the community and for broader Menlo Park, really. So I, I really do appreciate that. The only point that I would like to make is that, you know, library commissioners and the Park and Recreation Commissioners, we're not elected officials. And it is true that the overwhelming support was for keeping Oneta Harris as the name of the facility or the campus. But, you know, our job as commissioners is to reflect kind of the balance of what we heard. And there were other opinions. I mean, they did present them to us. So all I'm saying is that <clears throat> I support the Oneta Harris uh, as the campus name, but I think as commissioners, we need to also recognize that we are not elected officials. And I take your point that you feel as though we are going to be passing along what was the sentiment of the room. And I think we should also pass along what the sentiment of the entirety of the room was. So that's uh, that's where I would leave it. Maybe if I could just add, so I agree with our last comment. And, um, Personally, I'm not saying I'm going to vote for one over the other. So to your point, Commissioner Oates, I'm not saying I'm going to vote for Bellhaven Community Campus over Oneta Harris. What I would vote for is I do think we should present both um, as a way to reflect, yes, but overwhelmingly Oneta Harris Community Center was, I think, overwhelmingly presented by the community and by this commission, but there were other voices. And I do think, therefore, we have a duty, personally, I think, kind of, so there may only be three, only three who spoke, but there may have been others who didn't speak as well. So I, I think, I personally think we have a duty to present both to City Council. And City Council, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm going to listen into the deliberations to see how well they talk through it. I am trusting that they're going to talk through it as thoughtfully um, and with just reflecting what people have been saying as well. So I think they'll make the right decision, and I'm trusting they'll make the right decision, even if we present both. Um, so just to say, I'm not voting for one over the other, but I do think we should present both. You guys have other comments? I'm going to make a motion. Yeah, and um, I, I was at both community meetings, and uh, wh what at least was clear to me was that the, uh, it's amazing that the Harris family and the Lager family showed up. They appeared to kind of show up under a certain narrative that the name was going to be removed by some nefarious attempt by Meta, Facebook, Mr. Zuckerberg. This is the common theme I keep, kept hearing on and on. And I never got that sentiment from the commission nor the city council. So at least I feel responsible of representing people who were not here at this meeting, right? Um, again, um, it's, it's amazing that the Harris family showed up in support of their cause, but this community center is gonna be serving this community for many, many years. And um, it shouldn't be about, we can do both, is, is my point. We can honor Oneta Harris's memory, but also name it something appropriate for uh, future years. Go ahead, Aurora. Okay, Commissioner Aurora. Um, All right. Yeah, that's a, I, I think that's a good point, Commissioner Lee. Um, I've never heard of any um, push for it to be named after Meta or Mark Zuckerberg. There have been a couple of a couple of uh, I think email comments that suggested it, but nothing in uh, with any you know fervor. Um, but um, <clears throat> it's not as good of a story as that is the community community <laughs> um, uh, speaking out and sort of, uh, you know, winning over the corporation. And I think that there is some merit in that. And there's maybe some, you know, uh, continuing, you know, storytelling that can continue, you know, onward in the community. Um, and that said, um, I do think that, um, that, you know, I would uh, give thanks to um, all of the members of the community who contributed with tax dollars and to Facebook 
who, or Meta, sorry, um, who contributed several billion to Gates to build the center as well. I'm going to put a motion. Uh, before yeah. you, you do that, for the chair, if I may, so while the conversation has been going on, staff has been just sort of noting in the recommendation matrix what we think we, we heard. If, if you feel that would be helpful to display on the screen what we have so far so that folks, uh, if there is a motion and a vote, like it's very clear that everyone's on the same page. Okay, would that show that. Yeah. Would that work for everybody? Okay. So let's see here. Let's do some, some zoom maneuvering here. So you may recall from earlier, uh, this was the like blank matrix that's in the staff report and in the packet. Um, so what uh, I think we just want to do a, a check here on the part of staff. We jotted down what we heard from the commission, individual commissioners. So basically populating this area and adding some additional recommendations. So I did hear recommendations to just carry forward the five individual names. I think I heard that once or twice for each of the um, individual facilities. I didn't hear a specific recommendation otherwise for any individual of the five facilities. And then for the overall campus, I think we heard two recommendations kind of be voiced. One was to name the overall campus the Oneta Harris Community Center or Oneta Harris Community Campus. And then another to um, name the overall campus the Bell Haven Community Center or Community Campus. And then I did hear a comment about um, recognizing uh, the generous gift from Meta like on the dedication plaque. And then, so that's kind of what's in the chart here. And then there, I heard a few additional recommendations that are kind of specific around naming. One was to incorporate or honor former Mayor Billy Ray White in one of the five programs names, but not a specific one. Um, consider renaming Terminal Avenue after or in honor of Oneta Harris, either officially or ceremonially, and then to ensure that there's local history stories on display in the building, on the plaque, or, and or in the library. And so if there was anything like we missed or need to add here, maybe this is a helpful tool. Uh, given this is super minor, but given that there are so many pools of varied types, can we name Bellhaven Pool to Bellhaven Aquatic Center? That seems more appropriate. I I don't know if that's controversial. Uh, that's beyond me. Uh, one other clarifying suggestion: if if we were to go with Oneta Harris is the overall name of the campus, uh, rather than have the individual rec center also be named community center, it seems like that one would be Oneta Harris Recreation Center. Oh, so Bell, uh, rather than rather than the rec center being Oneta Harris again, it would be Bellhaven Rec Center. Yeah, got it, okay, that sounds good, that sounds good. Um, one other thing, I, I would just, with the pool, um, like, I was thinking about this earlier when I was looking at the naming. To me, Aquatic Center connotates, like, competition. Um, and I kind of envisioned this pool to be more of a community pool. I mean, maybe there is competition, but I envisioned it more as, like, family swim, open swim, swim lessons. And so I actually really liked the name Bellhaven Community Pool. Um instead of just Bellhaven Pool or Bellhaven Aquatic Center. I, I thought Community Pool really embodied what at least I envisioned it being, hearing kind of the presentations from city staff. So just to narrate in, in real time, I'm trying to capture these on the screen, but at any point, just let me know if I'm not capturing this accurately. So 
I I have a couple thoughts too. Just looking at if we're if we're shifting from the overall campus to the major programs, uh, in my mind, looking at the Menlo Park Senior Center, I know that there's also um, the Little House that is over off Middle Avenue, and I think that that is a Menlo, it's not a private organization, isn't it? Is it a private organization? Oh, because I know that's a senior focused center also, and that for Middle Menlo Park, that is also a community center for seniors. And so I'm I'm looking, and I and I I don't know if it's if it's private, then maybe that's separate. But to me, um, if we're if we're naming each of the different areas, Bellhaven Pool. Bellhaven Branch Library just makes sense to me to have it be the Bellhaven Senior Center, all of the all of the generic names to be consistent. And my other thought is that the the recreation center name just confuses me. I mean the recreation center purpose kind of confuses me because are we talking about just the gymnasium? Are there other um, are there other facilities that are comprised of the recreation center? So I'm going on my first tour tomorrow. So maybe once I go on the tour, I would understand it. But like to me, I'm I'm not sure what what were designated as the recreation center, and I don't want to have people showing up on this campus and then having being overly confused about which wing they're going to because of these different things. So whether we should be maybe itemizing it a little bit more detailed. Anyway, those Maybe I could just add some clarification about the, the building. So like the former building that encompassed, that was the Oneta Harris Community Center. And it basically had the, the, the recreation functions on the campus, including the gymnasium, which basketball, volleyball primarily. There were also rooms where different recreation classes would occur. So the new center has those two. Also had a fitness like a workout room at which the new center has. So the new center, um, like the recreation center component would kind of be comprised of those elements. And then the, uh, the pool or aquatic center is, it's sporty, but it's kind of considered like a separate um, thing from that. Yeah, basically the south wing of the building is kind of like the recreation and gym functions. Can I ask just a clarifying question? Because I think there, there might be a few of us, I'm not sure I don't speak for others, but there might be a few of us that don't feel comfortable recommending the Bellhaven Community Campus. So how do we how do we get around that? Like, is there is there a vote that we take? Is it majority rules? Do we- Gotta put a motion on. Yeah. But like, what, I guess, what is the, what's, so what happens if is it is it majority? Could I could I maybe add just to circle back to what the city council has tasked the commission with doing, uh, which is obviously to hear the community input, consider the naming policy, consider city council direction, and then make up to three recommendations for each of those five components, and up to three um, for an overall campus. Um, so um, I think the intent there was for the commission as a whole to pr produce like a set of recommendations, understanding that there's, especially if there's multiple recommendations, um, uh, you know, obviously the city council would have m more than one to choose from. So I think each commissioner needs to kind of vote their conscience and what, what they're comfortable with, but I just want to kind of explain that was the instruction that the city council gave. Go ahead. One more. Yeah, go for it. Um, I just want to uh, uh, express how I feel about calling the other names generic names. Because although they've been the names of neighborhoods and the city for much longer, um, there's still history in those names as well. Um, and we've been talking about erasing history um, in terms of Oneta Harris. And I think that we should respect the history of the Menlo name as well and uh, the history of Bellhaven. So I'm not comfortable 
making really detailed changes if the idea is to port over the names of the, uh, the internal facility. I'm going to put a motion so then we can maybe see if that will help. Um, so I'm motioning um, in honoring um, our community, Bellhaven, um, that the overall campus name be Oneta Harris Community Campus and that the five areas remain Bellhaven something um, and open it with like a star asterisk that we can have that open up at a later or with city council if they would like to name I feel I don't feel comfortable being able to give specifics for each of the but I feel comfortable having it be integrated that we overall call it Anetta Harris and that for now the the different departments or different centers are Bell Haven to honor our the district and also overall community of the name of it. So that's my motion. Yes, yeah, so my, my recommendation is for it to just have one overall campus name with the generic five, but if there are specific names at a later time to be honored, because I don't feel comfortable naming specific um, without knowing the whole history of, I, I feel comfortable naming it overall and then having each, because I think embrace this, the whole, um, I just think it should just have one name integrated as the whole campus. That is the spirit. Um, are you saying, let me just ask, are you saying, let's not worry about naming the Bellhaven Pool, the Bellhaven yes. Library. We just have the Onetta Harris Campus yes. that comprises all of these different things. Correct. But the pool at Onetta Harris Campus, is that what you're recommending? I, I just think, I think for the spirit and of our community of Bellhaven to just have it one unified name. So that's what I think. Um, someone who lives in Bellhaven, I'm a teacher at Beechwood, the students, I've, I, I don't, I don't know the family, but I've taught some, some of the family and I feel like I've heard enough stories that I want to continue the legacy and I think having just one overall name, everyone knows it as that. And we can call the other names if we at a later time want each different areas to honor more, more legacy, uh, more people of Bellhaven or anywhere else as well. Um, I just feel comfortable just naming it overall. I've always thought that would be, that is the spirit of. That's my motion, and we can go from there. Um, I, I don't believe that the guidance from city council was to come up with one name. So I think it's quite a strong thing to do, to only say it's only one, when the guidance was to come up with up to three names. So I just want to just, we'll vote on it, but I strongly disagree with I don't think that's um, in accordance with the guidance we were given, but I maybe I'm misinterpreting. If I could just interject quickly, I've shown on the screen what the city council direction is, just for clarification. Are you still talking, Sean, or are you good? Okay, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Julie. Looking left and looking right, it's, it's really difficult with this. Um, one thing that uh, I like what you're what you're saying, and I I would support that as well. And one thing that I've noticed since the time that um, Facebook now Meta um, made their generous um, gift back in 2019 is that there has been such antagonism in the community about stripping the name Onetta Harris from the center, that really everything that we've listened to for four years now 
has been the fight for that name. And and one reason that I would support having just the campus without five other names is I think it's it's the Onetta Harris name is given to the community center or to the campus. There's going to be a certain release of anxiety that may then allow for the generation of other suggestions for for the pool, for the rec center, for the senior center, that right now it's just been a fight to retain a name or eliminate a name. And there hasn't been, I think, enough stability to talk about other things. And also, to some of the comments that came to us at the last meeting, too, discussions about potential fundraiser or opportunities for um, advancing programs that would come with other gifts. Uh, I know that one of the one of the um, parts of how do you live can be from gifts or or donations for contributors. So, so th there may be an opportunity later that there will be others that want to give a significant gift, and maybe later on there may be an opportunity to name one of those those facets, either for another significant community member or for a generous benefactor. So uh, for those reasons, I would also, um, I'll be voting for the campus to the board. Do you want a second? I would just say that I would support that as well. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier, that it's an opportunity for other, you know, donors or people in the community to, you know, suggest names for those, you know, we, I mean, we can port them over, that's simple, um, but it is an opportunity to pay more homage to more member of the, members of the community. Um, and I don't want to get into another deeper discussion, but there are a lot of uh, people that make up the history of this land that we haven't even mentioned. You know, like the Ohlone Indians, who are the indigenous people on this land. Uh, you know, there could be a dedication to Meta for one of the, you know, the, the library, or, you know, not to delve too deeply into it. Um, uh, the Hispanic culture has, you know, a lot of influence in this, in this area. So I, I think that, um, uh, I think that if we did made, make an overall recommendation, uh, an overall naming recommendation to the council, and recommend that we have further discussion or, you know, about the, 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 the other names. Um, I, I don't know if the council has got any, is pressed for time to come up with the other names. And Sean, maybe you can comment on that. If, if I could just interject something really quick. Um, the interpreters were mentioning that for people online, they're having a hard time hearing the commissioner. So if we could just bring the mic just a little bit closer as you guys speak, would really appreciate okay. that. Uh, if I could just respond to the question about timing, um, I don't believe that there is the luxury of time to embark on another process to identify additional names because the signage needs to be fabricated for the new facility, which is set to open um, fairly soon here next year. So, and that was one of the reasons for the timing of this process. So I just wanted to point that out, the commission can vote or make whatever recommendation it decides to make. But timing-wise, doing another process is probably not going to work with the building timeline. Can I just make, throw, throw, add one more name, which I think is super fun for everybody. But I, I do understand the, the desire to, to um, honor Belhaven. I, I totally get it. Is there an opportunity to call it the Oneta Harris Community Campus at Belhaven? <laughs> So, um, and then, because I, I, I don't believe that we should embark on a new process at this moment to think about um, this process has been long enough, it's been four years. I think we call it the pool, we call it the library, we call it the, the recreation center. Um, and I think we leave opportunities for more generous donors because we love that to add names at a future date. But I feel like this is the best of both worlds to bring those two, the importance of Belhaven and the recognition and honor of Bonetta Harris. So that, if, if we are open to amending the motion, do you feel like that is some a possibility? 
the Annetta Harris Community Campus at Bellhaven? I think a potential alternative could be the Onetta Harris Community Campus, and then all of the pieces are the Bellhaven Community Pool, the Bellhaven Recreation Center, and then that Bellhaven is honoring the community and it's a placeholder for the potential future naming. Yeah, I think I could, I mean, I think if we could potentially give those to, as, as options. Those could be two options. And then we could say those are the one option is the Oneta Harris Community Center or Community Campus at Bellhaven. And then the individual pieces are the community pool, the library. The other option could be the Oneta Harris Community Campus and then the Bellhaven pool, the Bellhaven Recreation Center. So I'm seeing, I know that we're not unanimous, but I'm seeing some nodding heads. If I, if I understood the motion, there's only one option you're going to suggest. But if you want to say, suggest two, then I agree we should suggest two options, but that's not what the motion was. If we could take a roll call vote, would okay. that be okay? On the first motion? Or we On the first motion. Yeah, let's do a first. Yes, I okay. will. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. The motion is, as I understand it, that the overall campus name that the recommendation that goes forward to council be that the overall campus name should be the Oneta Harris Community Campus. And then the other center names within the community campus should remain generic, such as community, pool, um, library, and so on and so forth. But with Bellhaven in it. The Bell, Bellhaven pool. With Bellhaven in it, okay. And um, I'm, and the motion, just so you know, I'm strongly wanting it to we can have up to three, but I don't feel like I need to have three different options. I'm. This is what I'm putting on as my motion. And yes, but not. I'm not going to do the at Bellhaven. I'm just going to do overall. Keep it simple, and then Bellhaven is the actual where it is and the place. That's it. Keep it simple. Thank you. Uh, just curious, uh, are we excluded from adding additional recommendations after your motion? So we can vote on this and then we can then have a conversation based on the vote, I think, correct? So just to be clear, we're voting to include the one you're proposing and we can also motion for additional. So, so if this no. vote passed, this would be what you guys agreed to send forward to council yeah. if it didn't yeah. pass. So my vote, my motion is only to do one recommendation for overall with five, just Bellhaven building, and that's it. So that's my motion. No. Yeah. In, in the motion, they ask for one point of clarification, just so I can document it correctly. The Menlo Park Senior Center, would that be Bellhaven Senior Center? Or is yeah. keep that one as just well. to make it consistent, Bellhaven. Bellhaven. Okay. And no, and for so my specific motion is not to have other recommendations. And I think Sean's going to put it up on the screen before we take a roll call vote. So I think that may be a little bit helpful. I know it's late. We're all tired. We all want to be in sync on how we're doing this. So what I'm thinking is that we should vote on this, and then if it doesn't pass because people object to having just one option, then we go back to talking about, okay, are we going to have more than one option, or do we want to have a motion on up to each individually up to three options so let's take the vote now on just this one option and see how we do and if it passes we're done and if it doesn't pass then we talk about it does not need to be unanimous it has to be a majority Do we, I mean, do we, we should all agree if we, if we want to proceed in that way, or if there's more, 
or oh sorry okay I'm going to just restate the motion one last time since there was some discussion. So the motion is that the recommendation that goes forward to council is that the the one name will be sent forward for each area. Um, for the overall community campus, it will be Oneta Harris Community Campus. And the other centers will be Bellhaven Pool, Bellhaven Library, Bellhaven Recreation Center, Bellhaven Senior Center, and Bellhaven Youth Center. And I believe we had a second from Orton. Is that still, you still would like to second that? Okay, so it'll go to a roll call vote. Vice Chair Brosnan, how do you vote? I wanna vote that I'm not voting no on the name of the center. I'm voting no that we're only including one option. Chair Bunyagit. Yeah. Commissioner Chen Ricky. No, for the same reasons. Commissioner Gilmartin. Commissioner Hadrovich. Yes. Commissioner Lee. Commissioner Orton. Vice Chair Singh. Commissioner Terrio. Chair Velgapudi. Commissioner Wessel. Commissioner Wise. Well, it's tied, so <laughs> should we amend any part of the motion? Would anybody? Well, well, hold on. There's a vote in progress. Has everybody voted? Yeah, it was. And so, where are we with the vote count? Okay, so it's a it's a tie which means the motion does not pass. Am I able to make the motion? Chair? Okay, um, so I'd make a motion to add two more recommendations. One for the overall campus to be named the Oneta Harris Community Campus at Bellhaven and to Port all the existing names over. And the third option could be either of the two names for the overall center and to have no names to leave opportunities for them to be named in the future. So right now, the motion didn't pass, so I could present a new motion, correct? Or, or I know you're doing it with, within your, or I can accept her. Um, I, I, do not, um, I do not accept the, the changes. 
Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me just do a point of order here. And I'm sorry, I was typing. I thought I heard a motion from Commissioner Brosnan. Then did, I'm sorry, did that motion die for lack of a second? Was there needs to be a second in order for a motion to be voted on? Yeah, I'm, I was working on amending, doing the amendment of hers, right? We're still on my motion amend, with an amendment. Okay, hold on. Let me just back up because I think there was a there was a vote on Chair Banyadid's, um motion and the vote was six in favor, six opposed. The motion failed. So there would need to be a new motion. And it sounds like Commissioner Brosnan made a motion, but I didn't hear if there had been a second. That's we were waiting for it to be put on the screen. And if you put it on the screen, we'll be able to see it and let us know what the next steps are. I think that would be helpful so that we kind of, again, keep it on the same page. So let's use the technology here. So this is where kind of we were with okay. the second motion from Commissioner Brosnan, which please let me know if this is capturing it correctly, to make basically have two recommendations together. The first recommendation is to carry forward the five previous names and to name the overall campus on a Harris community campus. So, okay, so I'll clarify. Please do. The first recommendation would be as Chair Binyadjit suggested. Say, say that one more time. It would be the same as the one that you recommended Thank you. or the one that you made a motion. There's no change to that. That's not that, that's what I'm motioning. So everything above being named Bellhaven and the overall being named the Oneta Harris Community Campus. Thank you. Okay, so no change from the original motion. And then my motion, okay, additionally, we add two more recommendations. One, the second recommendation for the, the major programs is just to port over the existing names. That's not what's in the left okay. column. The left column is everything is named Bellhaven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's what the existing names are. No. Two, right? The senior yeah. center, oh, center is that. currently okay. named Menlo Park. Okay. And the recreation center is named Oneta Harris. So the, the, that's just a direct like for like to what's existing. The third option, or, the third recommendation would be to not name them, not name the major programs. And that leaves opportunities for anyone to rename them. And uh, the overall campus name, the same. And we could add at Bellhaven to one of them or make it an and, you know, a, an or option. And that looks like what I'm motioning. Yes, thank you. I, I, I second. I second. Sorry, was that you, Gil Martin? Yes, okay. So there's a motion on the floor and a second. And the motion is to send forth the following recommendations to city council for the name of the Menlo Park Community Campus. Um, the recommendation would be to send two names uh, for the pool. The first one would be Bellhaven Pool. Uh, the second recommendation would be Bellhaven Pool. Um, the library would either be Bellhaven Branch Library or Bellhaven Branch Library. Uh, the recreation center would be the Bellhaven Community Center or the Oneta Harris Community Center 
in the senior program would be the Bellhaven Senior Center or the Menlo Park Senior Center. Um, the Youth Center would be the Bellhaven Youth Center or the Bellhaven Youth Center. In lieu of either of those, send it forth with no recommendation for any of those programs and to leave it to be dedicated at another time. Um, and the overall campus name would be, the recommendation would be Oneta Harris Community Campus, Oneta Harris Community Campus, or Oneta Harris Community Campus at Bellhaven. And there's a motion from Brosnan and a second from Gil Martin. So it's to a roll, roll call vote now. Uh, Can I get a point of clarification there? From Sean? Sean, is City Council going to consider these as scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, meaning that in the columns are going to be considered together? Or is City Council going to exercise some prerogative and look at the Aquatic Center and say, we want to look at the recommendations that the commissions provide us and we'll decide on that independently of the library name, independently of the senior program name? That's a great question, if you don't mind me Thank injecting you. just a little humor. If I could predict what the city council would do, I would be an even more effective department head than I already am. That said, I think the what, what the commission has been asked to do is make its recommendations, and city council will do with them uh, based on, you know, what, what you're, if you convey it with that instruction, like they, our recommendations are straight up and down these columns, that would be added to it. If it was, here's sort of a a la carte menu and it's arranged for convenience in these three columns, we could add that as well. At the end of the day, ultimately the decision of city councils, they may vary from the recommendation. But again, just to clarify, we can make a recommendation and city council can choose to ignore it completely. So I just want to be very clear on that. We're making a recommendation. They don't have to choose amongst anything we say. They could, they could choose to. I don't think they would, but they could choose to ignore it completely. So given that point that they could totally ignore this the line uh, recommendation, can we just provide a variety of recommendations so they have something more to consider rather than basically the same campus name? I, I understand, but... Um, motion, if I could, just to clarify, because uh, Commissioner Singh, that's... A a good good point. Um, for the overall campus, add have both names or in each column. So, or Oneta Harris Community Campus or Oneta Harris Community Campus at Bell Haven, and then repeat across the three. Does that help clarify, Commissioner? It, so I, I think that the, I, I think that the council will, yeah, I think they'll, they'll do with it what they will, yeah. Just want to be clear that what I'm doing on the screen here accurately reflects what Commissioner Brosnan just said. And I believe there was a motion and a second. So if the maker of the motion does an amendment, I believe the second would have to agree to it. It, it sounds like the seconder did just agree. I would just copy and paste that into the second and third cells. Vice Chair Brosnan, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Buniaki? My vote is yes, thank you. Chenrecki, Commissioner Chenrecki? My vote is yes. Commissioner Gil Martin. 
Yes. Commissioner Hadrovich? Yes. Commissioner Lee? Um, my vote is no because we're ignoring the dedication plaque. We're ignoring any acknowledgement for Meta. We're ignoring any acknowledgement for other community members. I, I don't think this is a good recommendation. Commissioner Orton? I vote yes. Vice Chair Singh? I vote yes. Commissioner Terrio? Yes. Chair Velgapudi? I uh, note. Commissioner Wessel? Yes. Commissioner Wise? Yes. The motion passes with Bunyagit, Lee, and Belkapudi uh, voting against. Okay. With that, we will adjourn the meeting at 9.55 p.m. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody.